NRL is proudly brought to you by Tui's and Mitsubishi. Cannons are looking for back-to-back -back wins tonight when they line up against the in-form Newcastle Falcons. The Cannons convincingly defeated a lacklustre Brisbane side last weekend and are slowly showing signs of the form of old. The Falcons face an awesome task after last night playing the Illawarra Hawks and will look for a huge game from number 10, guard Al Green. Green shoots an average of 17 points per game and will have a big impact on the match. However, Cannon's crowd pleaser Steve Hood with 30 points per game will have different ideas as the Canberra team consolidate their form and surge forward in the Mitsubishi NBL Challenge. Good evening and welcome to Saturday Night Live, the Mitsubishi Challenge, NBL basketball at its very best. Tonight coming to you as it happens from the Palace here in Canberra. The contestants, the Canberra Cannons, taking on the Newcastle Falcons. I'm Peter Chapman, my co-commentator tonight, an NBL former hotshot, Tad Dufelmeyer, the man they used to call the microwave. Well, thank you, Peter. It's going to be a big game tonight. The Cannons are looking to consolidate after the good work last week. And Newcastle would like to make a double after their good win at Illawarra last night. It was, it certainly was a good win. We'll look at that a little bit later on. Well, we've invited you all out there to uh, take up basketball along with Network 10. And just to help you understand the game a little bit better, here's a look at some of the basic rules. Basketball is a sport involving two opposing teams of 10 players, five of which can be playing on the court at any given time. The court is 28 metres in length and 15 metres wide. The height of the ring is 3.05 metres, or 10 feet above the floor. The game is played in four 12-minute quarters, with stoppages each time the ball is not directly in play. Points are scored by either a free throw from the foul line worth one point each. During play, two points are scored from anywhere inside this circle. And the maximum three points are awarded for any successful attempts made outside this three-point arc. We hope that makes the game a little bit clearer to you. Well, as I mentioned before, Newcastle coming off a hot win last night. Let's have a look at that result. There it was, 108 to 91. They were up by as many as 30 points at one stage, and it was a great win by the Newcastle Falcons, who last year only won one match away from home. They're after two tonight. Let's look at the table, and as you can see, the Falcons right up there in fourth position at the moment in the top eight. Let's go down a little bit further, and there are the Cannons. They're coming off a hot win here last night over the Bullets, so we're in store for a great game. Well, sideline, uh, with me down at Illawarra was Ben Morrissey. Ben's come all the way up here to Canberra to watch this game, and he with him is the, uh, the Falcons coach, Tom Wisman. With me, Newcastle coach, Tom Wisman. Tom, great game last night and a great win. Yeah, it was. We were happy to go into uh, Wollongong and win a game. It doesn't happen for Newcastle very often. I can't remember the last time. The team played very good defensively. We were very focused. We hope that we can match that again tonight. Tonight against Canberra, what do you see to keep back this to a victory? Well, we've got to play our game again. Defensively, we have to be as focused as we were last night and, and make sure that we contain the shooters, the early offense that the Cannons are, are capable of, of putting up and, uh, and win the battle of the boards. But we feel that maybe uh, we've got an advantage depth-wise, so we want to look inside and, and we want to play a lot of people. Okay, Tom, thanks a lot tonight and good luck. A very pumped up Tom Wiseman and very confident. Very confident, but a little bit cautious. He knows how tough the Cannons are going to be tonight. Let's have a look at the Cannons lineup. And there it is Jason Reese, Smythe, Armfield, Stelter, and Hood will be the starting five. 
Let's have a now have a look at the Falcons. And the Falcons will be starting with Paul Kuyper in the middle, Michael Johnson, Terry Jozier at the forwards, Everett Stevens, the new import at guard, and me, Al Green. It would be a surprise here, wouldn't it? <laughs> and the players are now just 48 seconds from the tip-off. We are predicting a very tough physical game. Ted. Yes, I think it will be. Uh, in past years, it probably would have been a game you would expect to run up and down the court because Newcastle not known for their defense. But this year, with under Coach Wisman, they take pride in their defense. They got three fine new players in Dozier, Kuyper, and uh, their new pick from the States, Everett Stevens. They play tough D this year. So I would expect it will be very physical. Everett Stevens and, and Dozier, who you mentioned before, played well last night. Our two referees tonight, Jeff Weeks and Barry McLeod. And they'll have a tough job if it's going to be a tough game. Ben, you were there last night. You were courtside. You couldn't have got any closer to it. It was tough. Yeah, last night Newcastle was superb, Peter. Absolutely superb. Their defence is the key this year. And in past years, you've got to play tough defence to make it in this league. Well, you certainly do. Defence, get that right, then you can build on your attack. Stop the opposition from scoring. scoring first of all, old rugby league ploy by a man by the name of Jack Gibson. They called him the master of coaches, and that was his big go, to de master of defend, defend, and defend. And it seems as though Tom Wisman has done exactly that with the Newcastle Falcons. They won just one away match last season. They have already equaled that with their victory over Illawarra last week. Uh, sorry, over Illawarra yesterday. Seems like it was a week ago. <laughs> and also, Peter, just to, for those fans at home, Dozier, number 31, who jumped at the center here last year, was the NBL's Defensive Player of the Year, playing for Jerome Supercats. The whistle's gone, and up goes the tip, and Newcastle get the first advantage. And that was Green almost jumping over the sideline in the white strip. Running from left to right on the screen as it goes into Stevens, a good pass through. And it will be a Newcastle side ball. Jason Reese falling Kuiper as he tried to grab it. Watch for Reese under the basket. He worked hard last week. 19 rebounds, I think it was, Ted. Yes, it was a very good evening's work last. I'm sure the Cannons are hoping they'll do the same thing this week. And double zero. Jason Reese in the blue and red strip for the Cannons, and the ball refuses to fall. First up, and it's the general, Phil Smythe, with the ball to young Lachlan Armfield. We said he was 21 last week. He reminded you through the week, Ted, that he's only 20. That's right. He said, I'm just a baby. <laughs> there he is, number seven. Watch for him. A great game. Great pass underneath. And the general gets the first two points. Very good movement away from the ball by Phil and a great pass by Steve Hood. Dozier with the ball in 31. And the Cannons extending their defense up the court. Something that Coach Tom Wisman might not have been expecting. There's a player also to watch number five for Newcastle. That's right, Michael Johnson from the Old Castle, Newcastle. He's been around for years. He's one of the, he's second behind Andrew Gaze in the league in scoring, all-time NBL scoring. So look for a, a good game from him tonight. He got something like 25 last night, but it was a third quarter blitz, which just blew Illawarra out of the water. And he just was so hot. He just, every time he took a shot, it went through. Newcastle with the ball, moving it around out wide. Dozier. It's the ball into the veteran, 36 years of age, Green, in number 10, and Johnson gets the ball back. In goes Dozier, and a stop. round dunk down the baseline from Terry Dozier. Very exciting. Things fans love to see. 26 years of age from Baltimore, played with Geelong last year. Reese working hard and lays it in beautifully. The scoreline, 4-2. Cannons in charge at the moment. Very early minutes. Playing a 2-2-1 two, two, full court zone defense back into a 2-1-2 two, two zone defense. So they're trying to make Newcastle shoot outside, keeping them from going inside the guys like Kuiper and Dozier. And kept Kuiper out away from the basket. He missed with the shot. Was picked up the rebound by Hood. It's Reese working hard underneath. Can't get the shot. He gets the shot in, gets the re rebound, gets another rebound. And it won't fall for him. So he put up three shots, picked up two rebounds. That's that's tough work underneath Ben. He's, yeah, um, Jason Reese said that, that'll help his stats for after the game, the rebounds, definitely a few there. Here comes the Newcastle Falcons and Everett Stevens. Had a great game last night at Illawarra. 
picked up 21 points last night. Very smooth Dan. player. Very smooth. And there's the old man, Al Green, doing what he does best. And as we do that, both guards turn their backs and the ball goes out of bounds. Well, that was sloppy work from the Cannons. Coach Barry Barnes wouldn't be happy with that. Just a little more talk, a little communication, and those things won't happen. I'm sure they'll fix that up right away. Scores locked up for all at the Palace here in Canberra. You're watching the Mitsubishi Challenge live throughout the Capital Television Network. We welcome you to the main event, as we call it. And it's going to be a tough match tonight as the general flicks it back to Steve Hood. Robin Hood. Classy player from the States. Lachlan Armfield puts up one hand, calls the shot, pulls Hood to the right. Tries to go past Stevens and goes instead out to Jason Reese who missed with the shot and the rebound comes down for old man River himself, Al Green. The Cans have now switched to a man-to-man -man defense. It must be key by whether or not the Adelaide, whether or not the Cannons score. And as we do that, Al Green drives, gets the basket and the foul, and go to the line for one shot. Fouled in the process of going to the shot, which puts him to the charity line. Here's the replay, and there was the foul. An interesting substitution here, Peter. Last week, a, a big experiment for the Cannons worked with starting Lock Lachlan Armfield and John Stelch, and already Coach Barnes has put Jamie Kennedy into the lineup. Well, he didn't leave him out there for very long, did he? And the bonus shot doesn't fall, so the scoreline remains 6-4. Newcastle in front. Kennedy goes across to Reese Hood and a steal from Stephen. Here comes a slam dunk. No! The layup. Everett Stevens. The big smile on his face. I think he went looking at referee Barry McLeod for an extra foul, but he didn't come. There it is. 8-4, four, four-point break. Smite for the ball. Stelter misses with the shot, so we've seen some long-range shots from the Cannons already. They're confident. The confidence isn't being shown with points. That's also a sign that Newcastle's doing very well at their man-to-man defense and pushing them out to make them take those long shots. And there's Al Green again, hustling. Evergreen now. Here comes Dozer, driving the middle. And a blocking foul on Stelter. Number 11, John Stelter, 24 years old from Canberra. There he was, not in position, according to the referee. Must be standing stationary. That's right. It's one of the hardest calls in the game of basketball, whether it's a charge or whether it's a block. Al Green looks real pumped up tonight. Al Green holds the record for the most points by one player in the NBL, 71. That when he was playing back in the old days with West Adelaide. That's right. It's interesting that being the fact that Al is old and experienced now, his role's changed. In the old days, he was the go-to man, whereas now he does all the hard work. Rebound, defense, and the hard baskets inside. Oh, he was tough in defense last night. He scored, I think, just nine points. But that wasn't his value. As the first shot falls for Terry Dozier. Yeah, that's right, Peter. He took Justin Witters right out of the game last night. 25 years of age. And the second falls. Kenneth want to be very careful here. They don't want to let Newcastle get away with them. They want to start off very good if they can. Well, they're down 10-4 at the moment. 7.44 left in the first quarter. They cleared it out. Let Steve go one-on-one. -on -one. Dozier got a piece of it, but the ball still fell. Almost an own goal. That's right. And here goes the zone again. So I think they are, it is keyed by the fact that when the Cannons score, they go into the press, and they don't score, they're playing man-on-man. -man. Johnson, that man was hot last night, and he started off well. That's his first shot, and three points straight down the shoot. This is 13-6. Michael Johnson is also another player from Newcastle who's adapted a new role. Whereas in past, he's just been strictly a shooter. Now he's picking chooses when he scores, and he's doing very good with it. Smythe for two. It falls. 13-8, so after a slow beginning from both teams, the scoreboard is clicking over. Stevens brings the ball back up court. Just taking his time. Plenty of patience. Goes inside to Kuiper. And Reese is called a foul on him, putting his hand in. That's right, a reaching foul. 
He's complaining about the foul, but there was really no need to reach like that. It was an obvious foul. And we have a timeout here at the Palace. 13-8, the scoreline in favour of Newcastle. The pump from Reebok. It fits a little better than any other athletic shoe. Life is short. Play hard. Reebok. And welcome back. Saturday Night Live basketball coming to you from the Palace in Canberra. Cannons taking on the Falcons and so far the visitors. Newcastle Falcons up 13 to 8. We just had a timeout. Ben Morrissey's been down there. In the Canberra arm um, timeout there, Barry Barnes stress the fact that you can't leave Michael Johnson open at all because he'll do it. That certainly was shown. Sweet three-point shot we saw in the opening minutes. And there he is out there wide. Each time he goes to Stephen. Good pass inside to Piper and he gets the two points. 15-8. Very good ball movement there from the Newcastle Falcons. The general being pressured by Green. And there's a great backdoor play. Piper charged with the foul. Stephen Hood will go to the line for two. Here's on the replay, you see he's taking the back door. Kuypers had to come over and help, and he got a lot of body there. That was good vision from Phil Smythe to pick up Hood. It's also interesting to note that last week at this time, Phil, I think, took one shot at four half time, and already he's taken two and put them both down. Just adapts his play to the game. That's what makes him so good. Steve Hood gets the first. 15-9. So 6 minutes 20 left on the clock in the first quarter. It might be interesting to note for the fans at home too that both Terry Dozier and Evan Stevens have experience in the NBA. NBA being the big league. American National Basketball Association will be looking at round one of the playoffs at halftime. Plus we'll also be looking at some of the bloopers from the NBA. That's it. And there's that man, Johnson. Once again, three-point line. One of the sweetest shooters in the history of the NBL. He continues to do it. Well, Barry Barnes wouldn't be happy about it, as Ben Morrissey told us. He pinpointed him, said, don't let him have time, don't let him have space. That's exactly what he had on that occasion as he barreled in for the second three-pointer. Michael Johnson's been around for a long time. He started in the league, I think, when he was 18 years old. So he's a 10 or 11-year vet. 5,949 points as Kuiper buries two points. That's how many Michael Johnson scored. And the score, 20 to 10, the Cannons would be a little bit concerned because already early in the first quarter they find themselves down by 10 points. And as we say that, Barry Burns shows the same concern and calls the timeout. Welcome back. It's Cannons in control of the ball at the moment. As Reese puts up another shot, and once again it misses. It's 20 to 10. Newcastle Falcons with a 10-point break early. The ball almost fell for the green. And that's the strength of Al Green, Peter. He's one of the fastest players in the league. And in fact, a few years back, he was considering trying out for the, the Australian track and field team. Yeah, Teddy fancied himself as a 400-meter runner. He fancies himself as a basketball, and I'll tell you now, he's right. 21-10. He has 36 years of age, and he looks as good now as he did when I first came into the league back in 1982. And he gets both. 22-10, 12-point break. Now Newcastle could stand a little bit, but they've called themselves back on defense. Kennedy with the ball, and he is also a good outside shooter if he gets the opportunity. Foot with the ball. Puts the shot up and gets the foul, so he'll go to the line shooting two. It's interesting to see that they're clearing out the right-hand side to let Steve Hood work one-on-one -on, -one on Everett Stevens, who's a, one of the better defensive players, defensive players in the league. And so far, he seems to be doing all right. Foul was called on Everett Stevens, number seven. This is Steve Hood at the line. One of the hot shooters for the Cannons. They're going to win tonight. They're going to go to this man often. 
He gets the first. Smile on the face of the Canberra Cannon supporters. They should be a little bit concerned, though. Yes, we'll find out as the game goes along that Steve will spend a lot of time at the free throw line because he goes to the basket quite often. He draws a lot of fouls. He gets both. Ten-point break, 22-12. And it, looks, and it looks like Peter, they decided to pull back out of the zone defense and go strictly man-to-man -man so that Michael Johnson won't be able to get those open three-point shots. And there's Jason Reese with another rebound. Smythe leaving the ball behind him. He goes back to collect it. His hood. Good pass inside to Phil Smythe. It's out. Cottrell. Cottrell shoots, misses, but draws the foul. On Kuiper. Yes, That's his second on Kuiper. Double O for the Newcastle Falcons. Here's the replay. As you can see it there, I think that they can feel that Simon's a little bit too quick for Kuiper, and they're letting him work on him. And that's when he gets the foul and goes to the line. This is the first. Number 14, Simon Cottrell. Born in England. 29 years of age, 203 centimetres tall. And one of the things... <laughs> well, if you saw that, the ball was ringing around. Kuiper kicked it out. Of course, you're not allowed to do that. The point counted. 22-13. I was just speaking about Simon Cottrell. He's one of the journeymen around the league. He's played for virtually almost every team in the league. Johnson, well, was left with plenty of space. Smythe realized it, but it was too late. Two points went down. Johnson on eight points already in this match. It's 24-13. Smythe goes for three and gets it. That's right. That's good ball movement. If they can do that, penetrate and fill out the perimeter shooters like Phil Smythe. They have a good chance of staying in this game. Green using his arm to push off. And they get the rebound. Dozier comes in, shoots over the top of Reese. And two points count. 26-16. Ten-point break once again. Newcastle. And the defense a little bit too tight there as Steve Hood cuts through the middle of the key trying to continue the offense. Al Green just gave him a little bit of a body and the referees called the foul. Of course, you can be called on a foul. You don't have to be in possession of the ball. And we have Lachlan Armfield coming back into the game, sitting Jamie Kennedy. And also for the Newcastle Falcons, a former AIS player, Grant Kruger, has come in. And look for a lot of bodies to go find when he plays. Well, Smythe's hot tonight as well. That's right. Four shots, four baskets. And as you said last week, he didn't have a shot in the first half. Cottrell almost pushed him out of the way. Probably lucky not to get called the foul. As those who agrees with me, the Newcastle players do as well. Armfield three on the far side. Reese goes himself. The basket doesn't count. And it's a charging foul against... Jason Reese. That was a very, very dodgy call, and I feel Reese is very unlucky with that charge he fell in. Very unlucky. Well, there it is. As we see the replay there, I, I also saw last night that Kruger did the same thing a few times against the Illawarra Hawks and drew the charge. What's Tom Wiseman saying to the Newcastle players then? In that last time out, he wants them to pump the ball inside to um, Paul Kuyper, but he's left the game at the moment. That's their game plan, to force it inside. And on defense, they're going to mix it up. Occasionally, they're going to go man-to-man, -man, and occasionally, they're going to go to zone. Try to keep Canberra guessing. Well, on that occasion, maybe the Cannons were complaining up one end, but they just got a foul called against the Newcastle side when they were in possession. And they'll take the ball from the sideline. So maybe it balanced itself out. Yes, that was Grant Kruger setting an illegal screen. He looked confused as to the call, but throughout his career, he's been known to do illegal offensive screens. Cottrell, two points. Sam had a great game last week, and once again, he's come into the game, and he's immediately set his stamp on it. And there's Stephen with a long three-pointer, and Simon pulls down the rebound. 26-20, they've got it back to six points, the Canberra Cannons. Good pass inside, and that's... Matt Zorner's coming yes. into the game for Canberra. 33, Matt Zorner. I think he's had some problems with his uniform, Peter. That 33 at the back's looking a bit ragged. <laughs> he's from Albury, 20 years of age. I better check that he might be 19 and get upset with me saying he's too old. 
He's got to be living away from home for the first time. <laughs> His washing's a bit suspect. <laughs> His mother might be watching him. <laughs> mother's Day tomorrow. Yes, there'll be plenty of... Uh, all, to all the mothers watching, happy Mother's Day for tomorrow. There's that man, Michael Johnson, again. And once again, Barry Bonds tells the cannons that don't let that man shoot. They give him the opportunity. And he shows him why Barry doesn't want him to let him. Well, I think you're going to throw Jamie Kennedy back into this ball game to work on Johnson. We'll watch it if he gets back in. He's gone to the sub bench. His hood shoots, misses. And the rebound comes down for Al Green. Stevens. From the top of the key, misses. And the rebound picked up by Dozier. He gets the two points. And substitutions, out goes Smythe, in comes Kennedy. And already this game so far, the Newcastle Falcons have already pulled down three, four offensive rebounds. That's probably another thing that might concern. 31-20, it's back out to 11 points for Newcastle. Cottrell. Shoots and falls. 31-22. That's, that's exactly the sort of result Barry Barnes wanted with the experiment of bringing Simon off the bench. They need a little more offense off the bench, and he's proving that that's a good move. Well, Johnson, here he goes again. He's already got 11, and that's about the first one he's missed, I think. And he didn't miss by much. He looks disappointed. Yes, look, there you go. Once again, another offensive rebound there by the Newcastle Falcons. They've got... The Cannons want to stay in this game. They've got to do a better job on the defensive boards. Chad, this is what happened to the Illawarra game last night. Newcastle kept panning the boards and pounding, getting second shots. Also on defense, they forced the Hawks out of their offense. And that's what they're doing with the Cannons right now. They can't get nothing um, much um, moving on offense. It's still still. Grant Kruger at the line, number 11. Born in Sydney, 21 years of age. There's a couple of young guys, Peter Harvey and Lachlan Armfield, going against each other. Rebound comes down for Stelzer. He did a good job of blocking off there. Good job of the board there, by a great pass from Lachlan Armfield. Oh, well, he got monstered under the basket, Jamie Kennedy, but it was good sportsmanship from Terry Dozier. He picked him up. There That's it is. And that's a sign of the, of the new Newcastle Falcon team. In, in years past, they probably would have let Jamie just score that. Three players went to him that time, and they fouled him, but they weren't going to let him have the easy basket. There's another player on the court, number 22. That's Peter Harvey for the Falcons. First one counts. If the Cannons can just stay in the game at this point, they're not playing that well, but they're staying with the Newcastle Falcons, which is a good sign for them. And he gets both. 54 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 31-24. Newcastle with the lead. And Newcastle also with the ball. Stevens. He gives it to Peter Harvey. A keen surfer, as you can probably tell. Stevens offloads beautifully and slammed in. And once again, Terry Dozier shows his athletic ability with a great slam dunk. 27 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 33-24. Cannons would like the last points of this quarter. Kennedy gets the two points and two tough points too. But there will be time for Newcastle to come back up and, and score if they can. The foul's called on Cottrell. That'll put them to the line with 10.8 seconds left in the quarter. Yes, it's interesting that usually in the four, first quarter with 28 seconds to go, the team will usually use the ball and try to take the last second shot. But the, Jamie got a fine shot and put it in, and the Newcastle came straight back and took a quick shot too. So the Cannons will have another chance with 10 seconds to go. First one counts. It's a very good, very strong first quarter by Newcastle. Goes to the second. They're both in. As I said, just, a, uh, just under 11 seconds. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Cannons won't muck around with it for too long. The ball's inside. Hood's got it. Can he put it through? He certainly can. It was a great pass by Lachlan Armfield. The score at the end of the first quarter. Newcastle lead 35-28.
welcome back. Saturday Night Live Basketball, a Mitsubishi Challenge coming to you as it happens from the Palace here in Canberra. And at the moment, it's Newcastle in control of the match at 35-28 after a very classy first quarter, Tad. Yes, I say, it's, it's been a good game so far. And looking at the scoreline, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought the score would have been a little bit lower. I was, I was expecting probably maybe a game scored under 100 points tonight, but already Newcastle has 35 points, and over four quarters, that equals 140. So the Panthers would want to play a little bit tighter D. That was a good steal from Kennedy. Goes out to Lachlan Armfield, just slows the play down. Cottrell for three points, doesn't go in, and the rebound picked up by Dozier. Ben Morrissey, what was said at quarter time? Barry Barnes is concerned about the Cannons' defense, that they're not communicating much, communicating too much. Also, um, on transition, he wants the Cannons, when they miss a shot, to hurry back on defense and feels it getting back too slow, and that's where Michael Johnson gets open. 11 points for the first quarter from Michael Johnson. The Cannons right now are finding it a little bit hard to get into their offense because of the Cowboys. Three points from Lachlan Armfield. Yes, a great shot. 35, 31. Important three points for the Cannons. They try and regain their composure after hanging in in the first quarter. I suppose that's how you'd have to call it, Ted. Yes, they didn't look like things were going smoothly, and they haven't shot a very good percentage, but yet right now they find themselves only four points down, so they'd be very happy. Foul called on Dozier for hanging on to Jamie Kennedy as he went to get the ball. Right in front of the Coca-Cola sign, that's who Jamie Kennedy works for. That's right, he'd be very happy. There he is playing with the Coke sign, trying to get his... his, his <laughs> I think he did it on purpose. purpose. <laughs> I think... Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Up comes Lachlan Armfield with the ball. Stelzer. Armfield across the hood. Hood with Stevens in front of him. Stevens got the job on Hood. Pass into Reese. Reese puts the two points in. And all of a sudden, the Cannons are within two points of the Newcastle Falcons at 35-33. This Cannons showed great composure there on offense. Good ball movement. I think Newcastle went into a zone. They worked it around well and got the ball inside. Stevens. Is that the Kruger to Harvey? And a wild pass by Michael Johnson. Goes to no one. Just like in the game of basketball, the momentum swings quite often. It seems right now that the Cannons, the momentum has swung in the favor of the Cannons. They're doing very well, playing very tough defense. Well, if they can score on this trip down the uh, court, they can at least level it. Out to Hood. He's a great three-point shooter. Oh, just a stall. Oh, great play. That was class. He likes the right side of the court, doesn't he? Two points count. Yes, Ben, he, uh, Steve likes to go to either baseline. Last week against Brisbane, he had three or four shots where he pulled down to about 10 feet on the baseline, pulled up. I don't remember him missing from that spot. And Jamie Kennedy had a foul called on him, but the ball was already going down the chute, so the points count. And there are the referees discussing the call, and they seem to be happy now, although I'm not sure that Barry Barnes is. Tad, you didn't mind discussing a few calls, referees, in your day, did you, mate? No, we, we had quite a few discussions. I was a bit of a conversationalist with him, I have to admit. <laughs> Quiet conversationalist. <laughs> and the foul called on Hood, not in position. A blocking foul. Yes, you were noted for having a few conversations, Dad. You, you made your point known. I think everyone in the crowd knew you had something to say. Most of the time they knew what he was saying. <laughs> uh, ben. Good hard work in under the basket. It didn't go down The Grant Kruger, but he gets the foul, and it will be shooting two, I'd say. He'll go to the line. He was in the act of shooting when he was fouled, which means he gets the opportunity to go from what we call the charity line to shoot two. He misses the first. He still gets the second shot. It's important here, Peter, that he at least makes one out of the two because Newcastle hasn't scored yet in the quarter. That's the first point of the quarter, so they were down 7 0 at that point. So that's an important point for Newcastle. 200 centimeters, 21 years of age. Wilson. He gets both of them. And now Newcastle has extended two. They're in, looks like they're extended full court pressure. The Cannons don't seem to have any trouble with it at this point. Lockland Armfield with Harvey on him. 
inside the stealth. He goes out to Hood for a two-point shot. His foot just inside the line. Working hard on Lee Kennedy. He misses with the shot. And it comes down for Johnson. And away he goes. Look for it. Yes, there it is. The one-handed slam by Evan Stevens. He gets up for a little man, Evan Stevens. Certainly does. Born in Indiana. If you look at those arms, you can, the length of his arms, I think, helps as well. Air ball, but it goes to Lachlan Armfield. Some might say it was a pass to Armfield. Steve Hood would. Wood. I'm sure he'd be claiming assist there, but I'm not sure if the statisticians will agree with him. Al Green, which one is the game for the Al Green, back in, sitting as Peter Harvey. It's interesting to note that both Jason Reese and Steve Hood now are shooting 25 and 33 percent respectively. So for both of them, there's a cover on the basket. There's Michael Thompson. And as you said, they brought in Jamie to quiet, quiet him down, but in this instance, he's fouled him and he's going to the line for two. And Kennedy goes out after accepting that foul, which takes him to three fouls for the match. Each player allowed only six fouls before they have to disembark from the game and take a seat with us in the crowd. Johnson gets the first, moves to 12 points for the match. And both Jamie Kennedy and Jason Reese are in minor foul trouble with three fouls apiece. Gets both. 41-37, four-point break for Falcons. At the Palace, Saturday night live basketball, the Mitsubishi Challenge. On the 10 Network, the Basketball Network. Delta, three points, misses. Well, that's a good shot for the Cavs. That's the shot that John Stokes is known for hitting, and he must take it. Good defense there by Steve. a great move by Evan Stevens, but I think he, he faked himself out in that spot. Well, I don't know if you might have thought of it. We've got an intercept by Green. Goes across to Stevens with plenty of time and space and gets the two points. But as Wood was going back there, he pushed young Lachlan Armfield out of the way so we could move into a defensive position, and it worked. Unfortunately, pass was intercepted up the court. Down came Green. Joined up with Stevens, and they grabbed the two points to take them to a 43-37 lead here at the Palace. Hook. Shot was partly blocked. Green. Goes across to Johnson with some time, and he gets the two points. Stephen so Cannon's got to worry about it. They've got to make sure that on offense, that they're getting a good shot each time down the court. And I'm well, sure that's what Gary's going to talk about. We'll go to a break with a timeout called here, called here 45 37, Newcastle leading camp. Forty-five thirty-seven. Welcome back. Seven minutes forty left in the second quarter. Newcastle leading. That's right. The Cannons have to make sure that they get a good shot each time down the court to prevent Newcastle getting a rebound and going in and getting the ball to Michael Johnson on transition where he's just killing the Cannons at this point. 15 points for the game at this stage. If he keeps going like that, he'll end up with 50 plus. As Phil Smythe shoots and the ball just refuses to fall. Should mention, as we mentioned last week at the game, Jenny Cheeseman who's Phil Smythe's wife and also the former Australian women's basketball captain, will be joining the commentary team shortly. She was supposed to have a child last week. She's sitting in the crowd tonight, and she still hasn't had it. It's Phil's birthday. He turns 34 on Monday. I wonder if Jenny's just hanging out there waiting for it for him. Could be a, bir a birthday present. I talked to Jenny before the game, and she, she's very impatient herself. She wants, she wants to get it done and over with. Understand. She probably feels as though she's been pregnant for 20 months. That's right. And John Stelzer going to the basket there is fouled by Grant Kruger. That was the replay. Now go to the line for two shots. 47-37. It's a 10-point break. Yes, the count started out very well this quarter, but already Newcastle stopped their seven-point break at the beginning and came back and had find themselves at the 10-point lead again. And this is the first. Peter, that last time out from Newcastle, Tom Wise just wants the Falcons to pump the ball into Grant Kruger and go at Jason Reese because Reese is standing on 3,000 at the moment. If he gets a four, Campbell will be in trouble in the middle. He missed both, so the break is still 10 points. 
this Newcastle side which finished last last season but he's looking very good for a playoff position in season 92 with their new players their new coach and a classy veteran in that man mean Al Green that's right good position in there knew he wasn't going to make the basket but saw that Lachlan on field here's in the replay got Lachlan off his feet just jumped into him and got the contact knowing they would get two shots at the line. Armfield goes out, so does Stelter. In comes Kennedy. That's 4 and 14. Newcastle in the white strip. The Canberra Cannons in the blue. Al Green at the line. Hits the first. Takes Green to seven. And for those people statistically minded, it takes him to 6,845 points for his NBL career. Not bad. It's interesting, Al Green is also well known as a conversation on the court. And it looks like him and Steve Woods were having words there. And Al looked back after he made the first free throw and pointed to Steve. So that could be a fiery match in the game we'll see. 49-37. Tennant did get to within two points. Strong defense. Foot seemed to drop his shoulder, but Grant Kruger was all over him, Ted. That's right. If they show the replay here, which it looks like they're not going to do. Well, there it is, just the end of it. Late. Grant Kruger did a little bit of acting there. And he, as he felt the contact, he just threw himself backwards, hoping that he could trick the referees. But at this, this time, uh, it didn't work, and the foul was called on him. Canberra Cannons have committed five fouls in this half, which means any further fouls will put the Newcastle side to the line shooting one and one each team allowed to give away only five fouls before they put the opposition team into the free throw position one and one meaning they must get the first to shoot for the second that was a great move there by Jason Reese he faked Neil Turner up in the air but Neil Turner is so tall that he was still able to block the shot Bill Smythe goes across to Jason Reese. He puts the brakes on, goes inside, gets the two points, and he'll go to the free throw line for a bonus shot. Great move by Jason Reese. Once again, just a head and shoulder fake, gets the man off balance, puts the shot up, it goes in, and he gets the bonus free throw. Looks like Jason Reese must have been in a bit of a rush to get to tonight's game. I think he's left his socks at home. <laughs> he's from Iowa, 25 years of age. Double zero, Jason Reese. That's right. This, I think he, what he did is, the news, it's a new trend over in the States amongst the college players over there to wear the very, the anklet sort of socks, and Jason brought that over with him last year. Like women's golf socks. That's right. Almost losing the ball. In fact, he does. He puts it across the sideline. Chris Steele. And the cannons come up with it, and the important point at 49-40. Steve Hood with the ball. Great pass there. Good position from Jason Reese in two points. Just the thing the cannons want at this point in the game. Reese falling back, but gets the shot. To Green. Green inside to Kuyper, who's back in the game. He misses an easy shot. And Cottrell comes up with it, gives it to Kennedy, comes up to Reese. That mystery was caused by great defense by Sot, who made the same shot midway through it. Kuiper gets the rebound. 49-42, five minutes left in the second quarter, here at the Palace. Saturday night live basketball. Shot misses. There's that out in again on the offensive board. It's getting tough. Neil Turner from the baseline, good shot. I think you picked it there before, Steve Hood, Hood and Al Green are starting to jostle each other. Peter, that goes back from pre-season up at Bosvale, those two went at it. Well, they've got long memories, and there's Al Green having a word to the referee. And weren't you saying, uh, Ben, that during that preseason tournament that Al did a very good job on Steve Hood? Yes, Steve Hood started to get off a bit in the third quarter. Then Tom Wisman put um, Al Green on him. He didn't score in the last. And um, Steve Hood didn't like it. I can imagine he wouldn't. Because they were beaten by Newcastle in that preseason match at Mosfell. Yeah, that's right, Peter. I was 
tough game. Newcastle showing a good form in tonight as well. It's 51 43. Kennedy at the line. Of course, Newcastle have had a very good season this year. They won the preseason three on three tournament, and then the Kmart Classic, they were in the final four. So they're. And as I say that, the Kansas play great defense, and here comes Steve Robin Hood with the basket, foul on Al Green, he'll go to the line for one. A bullseye. And he liked it. <laughs> well, that's the sort of play that will lift the cannons back into this match. He goes for the bonus shot. It's 51 45, and we've got a timeout called here at the Palace. One forty-five. We've got some uh, first quarter scores from the other matches being played tonight. Hobart and Adelaide, 23 all. Brisbane and the Gold Coast, the local derby up there. It's 22-20, Brisbane leading. And Geelong, surprise, 36-31 leaders over the North Melbourne Giants. That is very surprising, Peter. North Melbourne is one of the teams of form lately, and Geelong's the team that everyone expects to finish last, and they have a five-point lead there. Interesting. Steve Breeny, the former Canberra Cannons coach, coaching Geelong this season. Tad North Melbourne like to get their teams to start and then get them in the last quarter, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> sure. Hobart, Hobart would agree with you, Ben. Came back, I think we'll tell some of our viewers who don't know, they came back over 19 points down going into the final quarter. As we see, a wild shot. It was the extended defense by the Cannons paying off. Terry goes, he looked up court, didn't see the man he wanted to throw it to, so threw it cross court, and nobody's there, as, as you can see on the replay. Just to finish off, yes, North Melbourne were behind by 19. They came back to win the match and created an NBL record for a comeback. As Hood shoots, and five for three. And look at that scoreline now. 51-48, just three points in it. 4-13 left in the second quarter. It looks like we're going to be in for a very tight game tonight, Peter. It's like a chess match, going back and forth. That's and how I like it, too. There's Steve Robin Hood showing his athletic ability going high for the rebound. Smythe goes to Reese. Reese tries to get past Dozier. He goes back out to Smythe. He's far too far out for a shot, although we did see against Hobart that he hit one from halfway. With 3.42 on the clock, he's not going to shoot from there, I'll tell you. Steve Hood shoots, falls over as he does, and here's a fast break for Newcastle, and lays it up Chris Steele. And I think the referees missed a travel there. It looks like Chris Steele got about three or four steps that time, and as the crowd yelled their disapproval, one that Newcastle got away with. 53, 48, at the Palace. Hood. Misses the shot. Newcastle side ball. Reese putting the ball over the baseline. Stevens. Smythe gets a hand on it and commits the foul. Peter, that last time out, Barry Barnes wanted the Canberra Cannons to extend their full court pressure and go back to his own. Also, he feels that the Cannons are playing well within themselves. He wants all their players to lift another notch. Of course, we must remember that Newcastle are backing up after a tough game last night. They were convincing winners. They still played hard basketball for two hours. We mentioned last week, Tad, very hard for a team to win these away doubles. Night, following nights. That's right. It's very hard. They get, don't get much sleep on, at the night after the first game, and they have to get up early in the morning to get to the airport to get to their next game. So it is very difficult. But once again, in the basketballers, they are professionals and something that they have to, they know they have to deal with. Smythe running all around the court with everyone chasing him. Eventually finds some clear space back up the centre. He goes to Kennedy with Stevens on him, goes into Reese. Reese fakes the shot. Smythe out to Hood. Hood puts the shot up, misses. But the rebound comes down for Jason Reese. And he comes through some heavy traffic to get the two points. Strong work from Reese. Yes, he has some very good inside moves there. Nice good head and shoulder fakes. There's the extended Cannon's defense. Almost caused another turnover. Extended defense meaning the, the players come down and defend in the opposition's half. As Cotter picks up a loose ball from Green. It's three on one for the Cannons. Kennedy stops, shoots. And the ball was blocked, but the foul is called on Stevens. Here it is. Oh, no doubt about that. That's interesting because 
Everett Stevens is known for his shot blocking ability. Well, that's an interesting play, too. I mean, is there an advantage that could have been played? As you see, the ball came inside, and there was Reese ready to catch it. He would have put it in for two. Now, what do you do there, Tad? Well, if it was a passing situation, they might, the referee might deem advantage and play on. But being that Jamie was in a, a shooting motion, he's going to go to the line for two free throws. Jason might miss the, the shot, so they're going to let him go ahead and have the two fouls. Of course, uh, I must, must also mention there the fouls at the moment. 14 have been called against the Canberra Cannons, the Falcons 12. Each player is only allowed to commit six fouls before they're out of the game. As we watched Tom Wiseman there a moment ago with his notepad drawing the, the game. There it is. Just explaining to his players on the, the whiteboard. I suppose. Yes, he's, he's concerned with the, the extended defense the Cannons are showing. And, and on his uh, board there, you can see he's trying to show the Newcastle team how to break the Cannons' press. Well, let's see how they go. It was interesting also, and the last time the Cannons didn't make the steal in their own backcourt, but once they got down the end, the press had its effect with the steal down at the Newcastle basket. So even though they didn't get the steal with the extended defense at the other end, it worked at the other end. So they don't always want to, it doesn't always happen with the steal right at the beginning of the play. Ben, you're down there. What do they have to say? As you see, now Tom Wisdom is concerned with the full court pressure. Barry Barnes is very happy at the moment. He wants Cannons to keep extending their pressure. He can feel that they can rattle the Newcastle Falcons. The Cannons are starting to get a bit of rhythm now, so look out, Newcastle. 54 50. And it's Kennedy at the line with a chance to bring that score line to 54-52. If he gets both shots, he has two shots. Kennedy, Jamie in number four. Born in Melbourne. Gets the first. Fifty-four, fifty-one. Will he bring it to within two points? He certainly will. No worries. And the cannons right up on top of Newcastle. In heavy defense. Looks like they've gone into a 1 2 1 1 now. There's a long pass to Al Green for Michael Johnson to break the press. Ever goes up to the three point line and gets it. And makes it. Just like in the one board. That's right. Three, three. 57 52, out to five points. Cottrell, he'll turn and shoot. He misses. Hood's in there for the rebound and gets the two points. What a great offensive rebound by Stephen Hood. He must have been a good foot above the ring. Here comes Michael Johnson. No good. And here comes the Cannons again. Unusual miss. Oh, just over the top of Johnson as Reese comes up with the ball. And that's a good shot. Almost falling backwards as he hit it and put it up. 57 56 the crowd like it here at the palace the home sides to within one after trailing by more than 10. johnson with a bit of space goes inside to kuiper he turns and shoots gets the two points to take the newcastle side out to a three-point break as we see stelzer come in for reese the station hasn't been off the court yet and i'm sure that barry wants to give him a rest and make sure that he doesn't get his fourth foul before half time comes up one minute, 11 seconds left in this, the second quarter, the Mitsubishi Challenge, NBL at its best. Smythe, back to Kennedy, Kennedy blows past Johnson, gets the two points, smart move from Kennedy. As Stevens goes past Smythe up the other end, and here's the man they've got to watch, three-point shot. He misses. Will he get the rebound? He does. He puts it back inside to Kuiper. And the foul called on Hood. Just not in position. But if he didn't do any doing something, he would have just walked, walked straight in and got the two points. That's right. He had to he had to stop him from getting the easy layup. Harry Barnes. 59-58. One point ball game. It's a one-point ball game as Kuiper misses the first shot. It turned out it was a good foul by Stephen Hood there. One-on-one -on -one situation, which meant he had to get the first to go for the second. 
He missed the first, he doesn't get the second. There's a clear out situation again. And Stephen Hood showing his great sleeping ability. And as Ben mentioned earlier, he likes to go right. I'm sure that Stevens is thinking the same thing, so he went to his left, laid it up over the ring. Just keep an eye on Hood on in number 44. He just lifts one leg up and as if he puts it on the accelerator and away he shoots. Dozier working hard. Misses with the shot. Hood showing some style in defense. A long pass from Kennedy to Kennedy. But the time runs out. It's half time here at the Palace. And the home side has hit the lead. 60 to 59. Watching next week for the start of the Mitsubishi Slam Dunk Competition. Every month, you could win an infrared remote control Mitsubishi MIDI Hi Fi sound system simply by placing the dunks of the month in the same order as our judges. And at the end of the season, the first prize is this fantastic Mitsubishi SE Magna Wagon. So don't miss out. Be watching the Mitsubishi Challenge right here on Network 10, and you could be a big winner. And I'm sure you can all see yourselves driving one of those new cars that we're offering in the slam dunk competition. Starts next week. Keep your eyes on that one. Well, we've got a great ball game on our hands here. The Canberra Cannons down by more than 10 at one stage have charged back and they've taken the lead right on half time, 60-59. This could be a very exciting second half, Ted. Yes, I think we're in for a great game today, Peter. It's like we said early in the, early in the first quarter, the Cannons didn't look like they were playing well, but their persistence paid off and now they find themselves going into half time with a one-point lead. Well, this, of course, is a Mitsubishi Challenge, the NBL Hot Shots in action here. But Network 10 also brings you the NBA. We've had the first round of the playoffs last week. We're into the second round. Let's now go back and show you some of the highlights from the first round of the NBA playoffs. The 1992 playoffs continue as teams move into the second round. In Miami, Kevin Lockery tries to conquer the world champions. As we pick up the action, Jordan turns the ball over, and Brian Shaw finds Grant Long on the alley-oop. But watch this crossover in the extension, as Scotty Pippen gives the Bulls the early 33-19 lead. Then Michael would take over. At one end, he wheels his way through the Miami defense for the slam. Then on the other end, he does more of the same, as the Bulls go on to beat the up-and-coming Heat, 119 to 114. And in Cleveland, the Cavs fans are ready for the Celtics. In the first, off the parish block, the Celts fast break as Kevin Gamble hits on two of his team high 22. Then in the second, John Battle hits on the tough runner off the glass, giving the Cavs the 47-42 lead at the half. Then the stingy Cavs defense comes away with a loose ball. And sharpshooter Steve Kerr hits this 55-footer at the end of the third as the Cavs went on to defeat the Boston Celtics, 101-76 in this second round matchup. In Seattle, Don Nelson and the Warriors look to stay alive. In the first off the turnover, Tim Hardaway sends a long pass into the waiting arms of Mario Eli for the jam. He had 22 on the night. But check out this sequence by Sean Kemp. First, he overpowers Alton Lister on what could be the dunk of the year. The sky's the limit for this kid. And with time running down in the fourth, Ricky Pierce gets the lucky bounce and draws the foul, thrusting underdog Seattle to the second round with a 119-116 victory. In Las Vegas, the Lakers and their fans hope to tie the series with the Blazers. In the first, Clyde Drexler finds Buck Williams for the layup as the Blazers led 22-18 after one. Then the Blazers break out as Clyde goes sky high for the alley-oop slam. He scored 26 on the night. Then A.C. Green answers back with a tough leaner in the paint. And Sedell Freet would score 17 points, two on this jumper, as the Blazers led 77-56 after three. But Drexler and his mates would prove to be too strong as the Blazers go on to the second round with a 102-76 trouncing. Some great NBA action and stay with Network 10. We're going to bring you plenty more of that throughout the playoffs. In the background, the Golden Soldiers Club pipe band are entertaining the crowd and they've been entertained by a great NBL match. Well, also on Network 10, basketball is not the only sport we're bringing you this year. 10's World of Sport also brings you Rugby Union, the very best, Auckland versus New South Wales, Sunday, 10th of May at 5 p.m. Don't forget the sports show, Mike Gibson's sports show. And with Eddie Maguire, as I've almost been run over here by, by the pipe band. 
Well, in the NBA, it's been a classic season. <laughs> I can hardly hear myself. It's been a classic season where we've seen what we call goofs. Let's go and have a look at the goof tape from the NBA. Thriller here at the Palace at 60-59. The Canberra Cannons leading the Newcastle side, but we've also got some exciting games happening around the nation. There's the big clash up in Brisbane. The crowd estimated at 10,000 are up there watching the Brisbane Bullets and the Gold Coast Rollers. The Brisbane Bullets coming off a hiding last week here at the Palace, 59-47. A comeback effort by them, Tad. That's right, playing against the Gold Coast team that is one of the five and one, so it's a good good effort so far. Okay, Adelaide are leading the Hobart Tassie Devils 48-46. And to the next game, here's a surprise. Geelong Supercat maintaining that form in the first quarter leads 64-59 over the North Melbourne Giants. Let's have a look at the half-time statistics from the match so far here at the Palace. The scoreline, as we mentioned, 16-59. And the field goal percentage, Cannon shooting a little bit better, 53% to 48%, not enough to make a difference. 76% from the free throw line for the Falcons, 69 for the Cannons. Rebounds even, turnovers fairly even, which is uh, in, in pretty it tells you what the game is about, a close game, 60-59. to 59. Ben, you've had a chance on the sideline to have a listen to what the coach has said to the players at halftime. Yeah, Barry Barnes wants um, the Cannons to go at Paul Kuyper. He feels that Kuyper's a bit slow on defense, and they can take advantage of that. Tom Wiseman was concerned that when Canberra put on the full court pressure, they couldn't handle it, so they went all over that on their um, whiteboard, Peter. It's interesting with the halftime stats with the Cannons. So far, the Robin Hood, Steve Robin Hood, has 19 points, followed by Jason... Reese with 13 points. Jamie Kennedy and Bill Spice both with nine. Well, some of our, uh, no, I should say team here, the men behind the scenes, about 20 of us here who help set up everything. I don't, I'm not here actually then, but the workers, the cameramen, etc., they fancy themselves as uh, basketballers, Tad. We happened to get a shot as they were setting up. Jeff Crane, our sound man. I wonder if we can see it. Let's have a look at it. He had a shot from halfway it's easy he says look at that and down it goes <laughs> you'd have been happy with that Ted. very happy i think the cannons are, are missing a player they might should sign him up uh, i think you might see that on robo's replays on capital television are oh, they even going to give us a replay of it now fair dinkum fellas jeff crane i bet you he put you up to that our director in there ian win peter i've heard the no look, no look pass but i've never heard of the no look shot <laughs> I think it's the only way he'd, he'd have got it. 
Uh, Peter, I'd like to know how many takes did that take? <laughs> well, they went through yeah, 10 takes and uh, two, two rolls of film, so to speak. <laughs> OK, we've got 17 seconds before they tip off for the second half. Coaches are both laying down the law, telling their players what they expect in this second half. The intensity's got to remain here. There's Barry Barnes talking to John Stelzer, Steve Wood. They're listening to what he has to say. And down the other end, Tom Wisman telling his players he expects them to get back in control of the match. They did have a good break on the cannons, only to find themselves down by one point at halftime, 60-59. Quite a chess match here, Peter. It's once again, 60-59. The Newcastle looked like they were controlled for most of the game, and Kansas just stuck around, and suddenly they took the lead for the first time it had, right before halftime. And this is the sort of game that players love to play in. It's a close, close game, and there's Herb McEachin, veteran Herbert Maurice McEachin, known as the Snake, or even to his closer friends, the Bean. <laughs> it's a shame that we get to, he's not having a little bit more playing time, but I'm sure that as the leg gets better, we'll see him out. There. And we're talking about, uh, there he is. There's the Herb Smile. Saying hello to all his fans. He's got a lot out there, too. He's been a, in the NBL for many years, the Snake. A great player. Suffered a horrific broken leg last season, midway through the season. Mate, he's come back as Steve Wood puts the cannons. Another two points in front, slams it in. Just like you talked earlier, told the fans to watch out early. There he was, that great penetration and the slam at the other end. Foul called on Stelter as Dozier drove into him. Yes, and for Newcastle at, at halftime, we have Michael Johnson leading the way with 15 points, Terry Dozier with 12, followed up by Everett Stevens with 10, and Al Green with 8, as Dozier goes to the line for 2. And Ben, interesting statistics on Terry Dozier. Yeah, Dozier had 12 points in the first quarter, Peter, and he, hasn't, he didn't even score in the second, and he hasn't scored yet in the third. Well, we, we talk about hot hands. A term which means they can't miss when they put up the shot. He was like that in the first. He's got cold hands in the second. How's he going to be in the third? He's back in form. He's got one point at 62-60. Two-point game. That Lachlan Armfield, the young rookie. 20 years of age. I'm just a baby, he tells us. Once again, there's the tight Newcastle defense. Cannon's looking around for the good shot. John Stelter going to the hoop. Great defense played there by Al Green. Here comes Newcastle. And the score is all tied up here as Terry Dozier lays one in, 62 all. Great basket there. Once again, it's all set up by the great defense they played at the other end. And there's Phil with a long downtown three-point shot. Well, Smythe playing strong tonight. 12 points for the game so far. He's put up two three-pointers. They're both gone straight through the hoop. 65, 62 cannons. Yes, Steele's five for six, shooting 83 percent, which is really outstanding. A field goal percentage you want to make usually you want to make over 50 percent, but 83 percent is just basically unbelievable. Piper with two points to make it a one-point game once again. 65 plays 64. up by four. Oh, there's a steal. Look out for this. Look out. Woo! Steve Robin Hood with the double clutch. A slam. Hang on the rim. Dunk. That play alone was worth the price of admission. <laughs> Smythe working defense, but Daisy gets able, clears himself and puts the shot in. Well, Ben, maybe it's the first and third quarters for Daisy. That's right, Fatty might like those two. I hope the fourth quarter might be a bit better than the second, though. Jason Reese. Shoots the two, gets the two points. And Jason faked so much that he not only did he fake those out, but he faked himself out. He didn't even realize it was open until he turned around and then put the shot down. Green just slows the play down, goes out to Stevens for a three-point shot, misses. Armfield comes up with the rebound. Play one, he puts up the finger to call as it goes to the general. Inside for Reese, gets the two points and 
this is a hot game at the moment. Right. Newcastle finds itself in a similar situation the Cannons did early in the first quarter. They've got to be careful here, or this game could be over. As Smythe takes a steal, a long pass upfield to Reese. Reese goes up, drops it in. And Coach Tom Wisman on the sideline, they're very disappointed. It's called timeout. 76-66, and this crowd has come alive with both teams are firing here. Watch it. And down it drops. And I think, Jason, there was going for the slam dunk, but the ball slipped out of his hand as we were going, so he had to just finger roll it over. Let's hear what Barry Barnes says to his players. When Johnson's out here, what does it matter any player? We're there. Don't run at him there because we're going to blow him down the floor. Run ahead of the ball. Take off his line to the basket, all right? Then we contain him in that spot there. We may get a trap, all right? We're good. Can't be soft in the middle here because they go to Kyber and Dozier. Hey, if, you tell us, if you tell the guys that we'll drop back in, yeah. that's a good chance for any exception if you come up a little bit. Jason, you need help. You've got to talk it up, all right? Because yeah. they're flashing this guy up. Last time John came up with him. That's right. But to me, I want you to, you're going to come and take it, so John will then come back, all right? But talk it up. All right. Well, that's the nitty-gritty of what the coaches have to say. Let's have a look what the other end's saying. Michael and John Get out quick so they don't have set up. Well, this is the one of the great things about coverage of basketball. Both teams allow you to get inside that hus that huddle, listen to what they have to say. The pressure, you can feel that pressure, Tad. That's right. Adrenaline starts to flow, the pressure here. And once again, in, in past years, Newcastle in this sort of situation probably usually would have died. And they would have just, the game would have basically been over now. But this is a new team, and let's look for them to come back. Well, Ben went up there early, early to listen to what Tom Wisdom had to say. Yeah, but Tom Wiseman was um, furious with his players because they talked about breaking the Canberra Cannons full court pressure at halftime and they come out and did exactly what they did in the second quarter. Just kept giving the ball up, turnovers. Well, this game has just changed completely as two points goes in by Green, but it's still an eight-point break by the Canberra Cannons. 76-68 at the Palace. Reese trying to drive the basket. A great rebound from Dozier. The defensive player of the year. Terry Dozier makes a great defensive play. Newcastle comes down, scores here. Once again, we have a close game. Sean Dennis ordering Al Green around. The Cannons are playing his own defense again. There's Kuyper in the middle. Turnaround jumper, no good. Should get the rebound, though. Stelter not in position, of course. It's a gravel right the call. And Tom Stelter turned around. Oh, what did you call me for on that? But it wasn't the call at all. It was a travel call by the referee, and that means the cannon's in possession. 76, 68. Phil Smythe with the ball. Calling play one. Cannons look to get the ball up quickly, but if nothing's on, there's the general to slow him down. Great pass there. Unfortunately, it didn't go, and here comes the cast the other way on a break. And Terry Dozier once again. Two points. Here comes Jamie Kennedy off the bench. 76, 70. I imagine Barry was a little bit disappointed with that pass there from off and off but I'm not sure if that's the reason for the sub or not. Powell called on Al Green, on Steve Hood. We'll put him to the line. Two shots. That's right, Al there. Reached in, felt the foul, put his hands behind his back, hoping the ref wouldn't call it, but of course the ref saw it and called the foul. The reason Bob Bernard will come out of the game, because Barry Barnes felt he didn't run hard enough back on defense. Well, that's what he said before. He said, we've got to get back quickly on defense. You'll find that's with both co most coaches. A lot of the young players out there listening, if you make a mistake on the offensive end, don't drop your head, but go back, hustle at the other end, and, and try to make up for it there. There we saw a shot of Barry Barnes. He was talking directly to Lachlan Armfield, just telling him the reasons why he pulled him off the court as we six the first. But in tonight's game is a real testament to the Australian Institute of Sport. There's seven players out here tonight that have been attended the Australian Institute of Sport. That's great for basketball in Australia. And of course, the Palace attached to the AIS do a fine job, not only with basketball, but with all sportsmen and women. That was Steve Hood's 25th point. Jason Reese with 19, and Terry Dozier 19 for Newcastle Falcons. 78-70, Canberra Cannons by... And Paul Kuyper, Paul for traveling it again. Two turnovers and consecutive trips down the court.
looks like Coach Tom Wisman's going to make a move here and get Kuiper out of the game. In comes, looks like Grant Cougar might be coming in quickly. You might like to just to explain those travel calls. Well, you're, you're only allowed to take two steps, or one and a half, unless you're in a, in a layup mode, you get two steps. And once you do, you have to keep one foot on the ground. And if you lift that pivot foot, the referee calls travel. Ball inside to Reese, it's wild. And it will be Newcastle ball. As substitutions come in, Kuiper out. In comes tough man, Grant Kruger. Well, he had a big impact when he came on a little while in the second half. As we see, a steal by Smythe, and it gets to Stelzer. And the foul called against Everett Stevens, which will put Stelzer to the line. But great work from Phil Smythe. That's right, Peter. Phil is, is probably as good as anybody there is in basketball at doing that, especially from the out-of-bounds play. He, he anticipates so well where the pass is going to go, and he's very quick off the mark, and then he's got those gorilla-like long arms and strong hands, makes a deflection to John Stelzer, and as a re result, John's going to line for two. Puts the first down at 79-70. It gets the next, he'll put it to a 10-point break. I'll tell you what, Peter, unless Newcastle can handle this full-court pressure by Canberra, they're going to be in a lot of trouble in this oh, second what? half. And down it goes, it is a 10-point break, 80 to 70. We've got 7.29 left in the third quarter. This could be a big, high-scoring game here at the Palace. There's a the horse still. Shoots. Field to Stevens. Past Hood in position with Stelzer and play it on. And this is getting tough out here. And eventually it's Kruger called for the foul. He didn't like it. Well, who me? He says. That's right. In a situation like that where the, the fans start to get behind the home team, sometimes it does influence the referees. At one end, Everett Stevens looked like he may have got fouled. No foul call called. But at the other end, there it is, the foul called on the opposition. There it is, just over the back, and both referees calling the foul. As Reese goes for the two-point shot, it bounces up. Rebound comes down for Dozy up. Stevens has been very quiet, and also this man's been quiet. And the ball's all over the place. Johnson. He gets the two points. Very fortunate there because he went up the air, looked for Grant Cougar to roll to the basket. Grant stood still and the ball came to the floor. I'm surprised there wasn't a travel call there. Smythe. 82 plays 72 to Reese. Inside to Smythe. Shoots, misses. And some calls. Pushing out is the call. And I believe it's against Delta. No, I think they've called well, Terry Dozier for a blocking off foul there. Once again, that's a play that could have gone either way. It's very hard to tell who was making the contact to who, and the referee saw it, that it was Dozier. Boy, well, got a timeout. Timeout to the score at 82-72. Pennons in charge. And welcome back to the Palace as the Gorilla attempts a dunk. And he slams it through. The crowd love it. Well, you came back at the right time. He had two dreadful attempts before that. Thank goodness he's it. That's right. I don't think the Gorilla's going to win the Mitsubishi Slam Dunk Contest. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the trampolines are loud. <laughs> We've had a timeout, Ben. What was it? Barry Barnes is very happy at the moment, but he wants the Canberra Cannons to be patient on offense. He wants Newcastle to chase him. They'll chase them. Don't worry about that. 82-72. They're down by 10. They'll chase anything that moves out there in a the blue jumper. Smythe with it. Goes to Hood. Inside to Stelzer. Back out to Smythe for three points. Puts it inside to Reese. And a great block from Dozier. No, he says. That wasn't a foul. Now the referee actually called low tending there. Well, he's counted the two points. Goaltending mean the ball was on a downward motion. And once it goes on a downward motion, you're not allowed to interfere with it. And according to the referees, it would have gone through the hoop, so the two points count. 84-72 at the Palace. 6.06 left in the third quarter. And this, and this extended defense is really giving Newcastle a lot of problems. They just have to find it very difficult to get the ball down the court. And the general, Phil Smythe, is just everywhere. He seems to be doing everything at the time being. He's having a great game tonight. Tom Wisman had the whiteboard out trying to explain it. That's from a long way out. Misses. 
Ball inside, Stelzer gets the rebound. Hood with the ball, it's 84 72. Cannon's in, in front. Goes inside to Reese. Turns, puts the ball up backwards. Oh, that's class. That's, that's really just class. That is. Almost to the 360. Once again, Jamie Kennedy almost with the steal. Watch this man, Johnson, says Barry Barnes. They've watched him in the last 10 quarters. He's sitting on 17. They go to him now. He goes in, puts the shot up, and misses the shot. But he will go to the line, shooting two. Yes, I think that's much better shot selection for Michael Johnson. That last shot down the court, where he's about three or four feet out beyond the three-point line, is probably a shot that Coach Wisdom didn't want to take. But that was a great move there. Got the foul. Unlucky that it didn't drop, but he'll get two shots. It's the Canberra Cannons leading 86 to 72 in the third quarter. As Johnson shoots, moves on to 18 points for the game. Skyper. Normally when a, when a team is going well, a shot like the three-pointer they took moments ago is all right. But when, you, when the team is struggling and looking for a good shot, that's something the coach really gets upset with. contact and good defense by Dozier put him off once again there's that charge block which way do you go feels upset he feels he had position but as you can see there he's moved just a little bit at the last second at the last second that was a good call by referee well he was definitely moving must be standing still 86-74. Four fouls against Newcastle in this quarter, three against the Canberra Cannons. And you can see Michael Johnson and Jason Reese directing the girls to where to swipe, wipe up the wet spots. That, that must have felt like Man of the Giants, that little girl. <laughs> well, she was a bit warped there, man. Six, 74, Newcastle need points. Stevens puts the ball inside and good play. Neil Turner. Hood with the ball. Moving the ball around. Just slowed down a little bit to play at the moment. There's Reese. And an offensive foul has been called on Simon Cotter for once again an illegal screen. He's probably just moved his body a little bit or maybe lifted his arm. Well, Barry Barnes is up there saying something to the referees. And here goes the Cannons again with their extended defense. Johnson, long pass. Stevens with time, misses the shot. Cottrell gets the rebound. And Hood, with a little bit of time, goes back out to Smythe. Too far out for the shot. To Reese, Reese shoots, gets the two points. 88 plays 76, 4-10 left in the third quarter. Stevens comes up, Johnson with plenty of time, gets the three points. Well, that's what happens when you allow him to have a little bit of time on his hands. He's hot, 22 points for the game. Jason Reese on 25, and Steve Hood on 27. Mike on 15, we see a loose pass. Good defense by the Newcastle Falcons. And they'll look for a good shot now here to try to cut into that nine-point lead. Here comes Johnson with the basket. But unfortunately, the ball goes through Dozier's hands and out of bounds. Well, there it is. Johnson going up. Throws the pass across, but Dozier just not quite right for it. 88-79. Kennedy just ran into an elbow accidentally. He's he out about the cultural. Misses with a shot. Smythe in there working hard. And the foul will be called on number four for Newcastle, Sean Dennis. And that's right. Just like you said, Peter, the hard worker Phil Smythe pays off again. Always chases those offensive rebounds. And Sean Dennis, seeing that he had the advantage, gave him the foul instead of letting him have the, left, the easy shots. Take that last steal by Newcastle, they come down and threw the ball away. That hurts Newcastle when you're 10 points down and you get steals like that, you've got to make Canberra pay at every opportunity. 
Exactly right, Ben, exactly right. Well, Smythe goes to the free throw line. The reason being, Newcastle have five fouls up against them in this quarter, which puts the opposition for every foul thereafter to the free throw line, shooting one and one. He gets the first and he gets the second. And Lachlan Armfield comes back into the game. He listened to his coach for about five minutes. Let's see if he's learned his lesson. I think Coach Barnes has noticed that Phil Smythe has worked very, very hard. He's going to give him a breathing out because he's going to need him in the fourth quarter. Once again, a pass going loose to Newcastle and nearly throw the ball away. They're just starting to get frustrated with this defense by Canberra. 90 plays 79. It's an 11-point break for the Cannons. But in this game of basketball, that's not enough to seal any game. Cottrell puts in two. That makes it 13. into the game for Newcastle. Out goes Sean Dennis. Now a little bit of foul trouble with four fouls, but Coach Wisman, I think, I believe, feels right now that he has to get Al back into the game to steady the Newcastle team down. 92, 79. Dozier. And there's a pass from Al Green into Dozier. Two points. I and mean, already he's let Cannons know he's back on the court. Lachlan Armfield now with the ball, fresh after sitting for five minutes. Ball inside to Reese. Turns, shoots, and puts the two points in. That's a great move. What they have to do is they have to keep Jason from getting the ball like that, Newcastle. Because once he gets the ball inside, he's virtually impossible to stop. That's right, Tony's really going to work in that low post down there on the baseline. Dozier working hard to get his side back in the game, but he missed on that occasion. As Steve Hood, oh, a great pass around the back. And the foul. No, he, Jason stepped on the end on the baseline, so it's not a bounce. Just the other out of play. play. Well, that was a sweet pass from the back. I don't know if Reese was ready for it. 94, 81. The cannon's in his zone now. He's got to move it. Newcastle has to move around and get a good shot. There's Al inside. Got it, got it, man. Hey, hey, hey. Reese called for the foul on Green. That could be could spell trouble for the cannon because immediately, as you see, John Stelter's coming into the game as Jason Reese will go out with his fifth foul. Reese has just one more foul before he is out of the game. Bert McGeechan still sits on the bench. Interesting to see. Barry Barnes will give McGeechan some quality time in this match. It's a sort of player that can protect a good lead. Because of his experience, he could do nothing but help. He gets one, misses the second. Arm filled with the ball. It's 94 82. Canberra Cannons in front with 141 left in the third quarter. Steve Hood. Puts the ball inside. Stelzer, he's fouled in the process of shooting. He'll shoot two. And he's fouled by Al Green, and that makes five fouls on Al Green. So both teams with players in foul trouble. Stelzer at the line. Now there's Al Green, number 10. 36-year-old New Yorker who's made the NBL his own. Stelter gets the first. And the Ginandera High School Band revs up. They get both. The crowd like it. 96-82. Great cast increasing. I'd say was, was the foul call. Wisman thought it was okay. Barry Barnes didn't like it. You go to the line shooting one and one. I don't think John Stokes liked the foul either. As it's also it's his fourth foul, so he's slowly creeping into a bit of foul trouble himself. Let's have a look at some of the other progress scores we've just received. The Devils up or down 71-63 to the 30 Adelaide 36ers. 36ers will be looking for a win there because they're one of the teams that everyone's picked to do well this year and they find themselves at the bottom of the ladder. Points counts. Tad, you're right about how good he's definitely doing a lot of talking out there. Now he's just turned to the camera and said, Do you like that? Well, maybe they might.
might point to the scoreboard and say, do you like that? That's right, fair enough. And Terry Dozier and Simon Coggins is bumping bodies in there. The referee's a lot of allowing a lot of physical activity going on. And there's the defensive player of the year, Terry Dozier again, with getting fine position on Steve Hood and the charge is called. How do you get past a guy like Dozier? Look at the size of him. There he is, he's standing in front. It's a little bit blocked off there by Stelzer and Turner, but he's about six foot ten, and as you can see, he's all arms and legs, and he uses them very much to his advantage. I reckon he could stand in the center of the court and hold his hands up, and he wouldn't be able to throw it past him. Just about. Working hard inside was Green. Once again, he gets the foul call, and he's going to go to the line. So he's... Well, this is... This is almost like a final quarter. This is tough defense at the moment, Ted. That's right, it's got the feel of it. It's going to be that sort of game, too. That's why the Cannons have to be careful that they don't fall asleep and relax a little bit. Because if they do, Newcastle will take an opportunity like that and be right back in the game. 47 seconds left in this quarter. That's 96-85. One shot to come. And there's Al Green once again talking to the side. Now, I'm not sure if he's talking to her or who he's talking to, but he, that mouth has never stopped. Taddy's talking to Jason Reese. And Reese is sitting down with five fouls to his name. Maybe that makes a lot of sense. Get him on, get him upset. Let him foul me. Put him out of the game. That's what he's saying, Fred. He's saying, come out here, boy. <laughs> well, Al wants to be careful himself, but he doesn't let his emotions go. Do too much, he can get his sixth foul, and Newcastle be in real trouble. That's good work from Lachlan Armfield. That was to Kennedy, and it hits the three. That was great play from a young rookie. And that's a shot from Jamie, renowned for his three-point shooting, and that one was way beyond the three-point line. Well, there's one shot left in this game with eight seconds on the clock. Stevens with the ball, Armfield trying to stop him, goes to Dozier. Dozier shoots, gets the two points. That'll be the three-quarter time score. It's 99, the Cannons, leading the Newcastle Falcons, 88. And welcome back to the Palace as the dancers entertain the crowd with a Skyhooks classic horror movie. Is it going to be a horror movie for the Newcastle Falcons here at the Palace? They played so well last night. They played so well in the opening quarters here. But they've seen their 10-point break evaporate, and now it's the Canberra Cannons out, 99 to 88. Tad, tough ask for them to come back. Well, it's been that type of game where the momentum has switched three or four times, and they're certainly by no means out of it. The Cannons are playing very well right now. It's going to take a big, a big effort on the Newcastle Falcons to get back into this game. Then what was said at the three-quarter interval? Tom, Wis Tom Wisman from Newcastle wants his um, team to move the ball a bit more around on offense, be a bit more patient, turn it over a couple of times, and also look at Newcastle to go at Jason Reese to try and get him out of here. So I feel if he goes... Certainly thought he's sitting on 27 points at the moment, as is Steve Hood. Johnson gets three. Once again, they've left him alone outside, and he's made him pay. He goes to 25 points for the match. 99-91. They left him alone in the first quarter and paid dearly. Newcastle looking Reese shoots, it looks short, it is short. Piper comes up with the rebound, some momentum Newcastle's way in the opening seconds of this final championship quarter. Mitsubishi challenges, two points goes in for Stevens. 99-93, Smythe charges the ball back up court. Newcastle right away, back into the game, the deficit down, down to six, Peter, and Newcastle looking like they're gonna get right back into it. Five points in a matter of under a minute as Reese shoots the two, it doesn't fall. That's a good shot, though. That's the sort of shot that the Cannons hope that Reese will get quite often. Ball stripped off Stevens, but he gets it back and gets the two points. So we've seen a seven-point turnaround in the opening seconds on this championship quarter. Mitsubishi challenge. Steve Hood going for the basket and draws the foul on Kuiper. The Cannons got the ball down very quickly there, and Steve made a great athletic move and got the foul. And that's his third for the game. So the big question mark hangs over Jason Reese, the tough man in double O for the Canberra Cannons, sitting on five fouls, one more, and he's out of the match. That's him. 
as he watched Steve, watches Steve Hood. It's interesting to note, Peter, that he's not even lined up in the in the rebounding position there on the offensive end because I think Coach Barnes is, is concerned that he might go in there for the offensive rebound, get the foul called, and he will be out of there. Well, it's late, of, late at night, of course, but uh, the children here are all watching intently as their favorite team, the Canberra Cannons, hold the lead. 101, they've broken the 100-point mark to 95. Anyone's match here, Mitsubishi Challenge. The Cannons looking to extend their defense like they did in the third quarter. Stevens with the ball, bounces it between his legs. Cannons playing his own defense. You gotta be careful not to let Johnson get open. Green. Stevens comes inside, gets it to Kuiper. Kuiper stripped of the ball and a foul called on Smite. On that play there, Peter Everett Stevens really showed his class. He drove to the basket, faked the man up, got the good pass to Kuiper, who really wasn't ready for it. He was lucky enough that they called the reach and end foul on the Cannons. And there's another score update from one of the other matches around the network. The Giants up 92 over the Supercats. So Geelong, who were in front, have fallen behind, but only by six. That game's still way open, as is this one here. 101 to 96. It's a great game here. Very close. It's the sort of, sort of game that the fans like to watch. This is a beauty. He gets only one. It's 101 to 96. Smite. Phil Smythe, it's a little bit too quick for Sean Dennison, and once again, Smythe with the advantage. Dennis realized it, reached from behind, an easy foul to call for the refs. Not much doubt about that. Hood hands it off to Smythe. Reese gets the two points. Yes, they, just, they can't let Reese have that sort of shot. They've got to get a hand up in his face or he's going to make it all night long. Well, Dozy was on him, but he just faked him out. Johnson, this is the man they've got to watch. Very vicious. Very good defense by Jamie Kennedy. Once again, a shot that probably Coach Wisman would have preferred that might not take. Hood with the ball. Back to Spine. Cross to Reese. Will Reese shoot? He goes in, does the heavy work, but doesn't get the basket. But he will go to the line shooting two. His foul's called on Kuiper. And both Paul Kuiper and Coach Tom Wisman unhappy with the call. Here it is. Never in position. Never in position. Reese realized it. Bumped the body, got the call, and goes to the line for the reward. Well, here come the progress stores. They roll in, and it's the Gold Coast Rollers behind against the Brisbane Bullets. But that uh, big break they did have is down to 79-73. Reese with a shot. Doesn't go any closer without going in. He just did the ratatata and jumped out. Even the gorilla was upset. Drops for one. It's 104.96. Eight point break. And the pressure is right on Newcastle to get back into this match at the Palace. Long pass up, upfield to Green. He turns. Gives it to Dennis. Dozier. Side to Green, strips the ball, no he's not, he's got it back and puts the two points in. Put with the ball, Cannon's charging back up on the attack. He loses the ball though and it's Newcastle with the ball. Johnson's got it, he goes up and puts the two points in and all of a sudden there's only four points in the match at the Palace. 9.13 left in the quarter. The final championship quarter of the Mitsubishi Challenge match between the Canberra Cannons and the Newcastle Falcons. 104-100. Barry Barnes is putting Simon Cox in the game once again, looking, hoping that he'll lift the team. Ball goes up, and it comes down to Sean Dennis to take it upfield. Dozier drops the two points. And we've got a two-point ball game on our hands, 104 to 102 in fierce, fast action. And that's what happens with the Cannons in. Jason probably took a shot that he might might have been better off passing the ball and working around for a better one. Newcastle got the rebound, came down and scored. We're going to time out, 104, 102, it's anybody's game at the Palace. 
Well, we're hearing the rendition of Live and Let Die during that break. Who's going to live and who's going to die? It's anyone's game. It's 104 to 102. Ben Morrissey. As far as, as, far as Barry Barnes is concerned, Peter, it's Newcastle is going to die. In that last time out, he wants the Cannons to be a bit more patient in offense, play a bit more team ball. He feels they're starting to go one out. A couple of times, guys have four shots, but they could have one more pass and have been a guy for an open shot. Well, Kennedy and Futsal in as it goes to Reese. Dozier sweating on him, goes out to Smite for a three-point attempt. He fakes, goes back to Kennedy. He shoots the two and gets it. The crowd like it. It's 106, 102. We've still got plenty of time left in this championship quarter. Stay with us wherever you are on the Capital Television Network. This is a hot game of basketball and it's going to get even hotter in these final minutes. As Smythe gets the steal off Kennedy. Back to Kennedy, he did the initial hard work and he gets the two points and the reward. 108 to 102. Replay, you see there a great pass from Smythe to Kennedy. He's really lifted the team the last few minutes. Dozier. Johnson shoots for three. Kuiper, was he reaching in? Over the top. Once again, Peter, there's a shot that I'm sure Coach Tom Wisman would not be happy with. Michael Johnson is at least three or four feet beyond the three-point line. No need for that shot at that time. And that's Kuiper's fifth, so he's in foul trouble as well. As he's arguing with the referee, better be careful he doesn't get a tech foul. Smythe with the ball. Offloads to Hood. Back to Kennedy. Inside the three-point line, and he gets two points for it. He's on fire. He's on fire. That's three in a row. And look for Jamie to score now. Once he gets the feeling, Jamie can really shoot the eyes out of the basket. He's on 18 points at the moment. It's 110 to 102. The ball comes down for Cottrell, though they aren't falling for Newcastle at the moment. Smythe across the hood with open space. And there's Jamie wide open other end, but unfortunately the Cannons didn't see him. Smythe. The Cannons chanted. Chant is up at the Palace. Here's and here's Kennedy. He's free. He shoots short, but he gets the rebound. He shoots again, and he gets the two points. You're right about Kennedy when he's getting in the groove. He is mean. And it's a timeout called by Newcastle. It's 112 to 102. And welcome back. It's 112 to 102. The Canberra Cannons up by 10. Quick, three quick baskets by Jamie. Kennedy has really blown the lead out. Well, Ben, the timeout was called by Wisman. Tom Wisman, the Newcastle Falcons coach. What did he have to say to his players? Tom Wisman wants the Falcons to get up and harass the um, Canberra Cannons. That's why he's throwing in Peter Harbour. Number, that's why he's throwing in Peter Harvey, number 22, to harass the hell out of the Cannons. He did that to Doug Avenham last night. Another great steal by the Cannons, and here they come on the fast break. Phil sees it isn't on and slows it down. Over to Steve Hill with that athletic move, and there he is with that great first step, quick as you can see, and two more points for the Canberra Cannons. And he goes to the high score of the match at 31 for Steve Robin Hood. He's hitting the bullseye tonight. This is strong defense. Stevens has been kept to a low 14 so far. Johnson. Comes out to Peter Harvey back on the court. Dozier goes in and drops it in for two points and draws the foul. He'll go to the line for an extra bonus point. Peter, you're right about Steve Hood hitting the um, basket tonight. I think he's got a few more arrows left, mate. In this sort of game, it's so important that each time down the court, teams get a good shot. That one shot by Michael Johnson right before the timeout. He missed it. Suddenly, the cannon dropped to 10 points. Had they worked it around, got a good shot, it still could be a four, two-point game. It's 114 to 105. That's nine points. Five minutes, 40 left in the game. We could see as many as 30 points scored by each side in that period. And there's that great defense by Everett Stevens. He's so good, and his timing is so good on blocking shots. But it will be the Cannon side ball into Smythe. 
And he's got tough defense and the harassment calls. Still with a great move, it doesn't fall, but there's big Jason Reeves with the offensive rebound to put it back in. Well, that's just called good basketball. Good work from Phil Smythe. Good rebound from Jason Reese there doing the tough work underneath the, the basket. And Smythe just tipping the ball over the back line to stop Dozier from getting the rebound. 116 to 105 at the Palace. 5.22 left in the match. The championship quarter. Live basketball here on Capital Television throughout the viewing area. I hope you're enjoying the match as much as I am. It's a beauty. And there's a foul called on Simon Cotter for reaching in. And I think, Peter, that if Newcastle's going to have a run at the game, they've got to do it right now. They've got to right, have a couple of good offenses now, get good shots, get some points on the board, and get back in it right now. Well, now is the time, according to Tad Dufelmeyer. Cannons are playing extremely well. The momentum is on their side. So if Newcastle doesn't get the good shots, the confidence the Cannons have now could show at the other end. Each side has committed four fouls. Steve Hood called for stepping in across the line. Very interesting, Peters. That's Steve Hood's fifth foul. So both Jason and Steve on five fouls now, which could have a major influence on this game. If they lose both those players, the Cannons would be in all sorts of trouble. And that's the offense that Newcastle are looking for. Great penetration, pull up from the baseline jumper from Adam Stevens. And pressure on Phil Smythe. Puts the ball across Cottrell. The Hood They're working hard to get the ball up the other end of the court. They've got it there at the moment. It's Jason Reese with the ball. He goes out to Cottrell. It's a soft shot, doesn't it? But Cottrell goes in hard to try and get it. And he just fails. It comes up for it. Newcastle lay it up through the ability of Sean Dennis. And a timeout called here at the Palace. It's 116 to 109. We'll go down into the huddle with the Canberra Cannons as Barry Barnes tries to keep his side focused on this lead of seven points at the moment. He won't stand around, but we all moved to spots. The ball went into Jay Stein, and we all stood and hoped like hell he was going to be able to find someone out there. All right, we've got to move to the holes, get the ball, and run the offense. Hey, they're going to chase us. When we've run it, we've scored. Let's come down and run a, run a box. Let's run a box, all right? Yeah, my fault, my fault. Hey, that's right. Keep pushing us. Let's head down to Tom Wisman. Don't give them a second chance. Offense can get the goal win three minutes. If they go mad. Tom Wisman might be having trouble being heard by his players because the chant is up here at the Palace. Cannons, cannons, cannons. 116 to 109, 4 minutes 32 left in the championship quarter. Ben, they look fairly composed down on the Cannons bench. Yeah, that's right, Peter. They look in a pretty good situation at the moment. But you must remember, at three-quarter time, they're out by 11, and in the space of a couple of minutes, Newcastle brought it back to two, and then now they've jumped out to a fair, good, fairly good lead at the moment. It's Cottrell with the ball. Reese trying to clear himself. Goes to Kennedy. It's a 10-second hooter. Goes to Steve Hood for the shot. Comes off, but Reese picks up the rebound. It goes loose, and it's Newcastle with the ball. It's three on one. Stevens puts it up. Doesn't draw the foul though, and he just gets the two points. And we've got a referee timeout while they just clean up a little bit of sweat off the floor. Of course, it gets like glass. Once these players hit the boards or hit the, the floor, slipping in a sliding everywhere. An entry substitution, the player that lifted the cannon so much, Jamie Kennedy, has now been relieved by Lachlan Armfield. Kennedy sits on 20 points. 27 fouls against the Canberra Cannons. Falcons 23 for the game. There's that harassment by Peter Harvey that Ben was speaking of. He's on Phil Smite like a glove. Steve Wood. Newcastle seem to be lifting their defense just another notch. 
There we go, the 10, 10 second warning. Now's the time they have to reach. And charge. He's gone, he's gone. That's Jason's sixth foul, offensive foul. Defensive player of the year. Terry Dozier gets the good position, throwing his fish in the air now, he's happy about it. Great defensive play by Terry Dozier, and there you can see Jason. Not feeling too good, walking to the bench. Well, he'll have plenty of time to feel better because he's going to be sitting for the rest of the match. The pressure is now on the Cannons. Their number one big player is sitting, Jason Reese, on 32 points for the game. A great effort. That's the big question mark hanging over the Cannons this year. Are they big enough? Can they win when Jason's not in there? So right now, we'll see. Plenty of time. They allow him free space out the front. Peter Harvey. Puts the shot up, goes here, and they get the two points. Leader with him, three points now. It's 116 to 113. Smart play of the general now will come in to play. And that'll put that foul, reach around foul by Peter Harvey. We'll put the cannons into the bonus. And Phil Smythe, one of the best free throw shooters in the history of the NBA, will go to the line. I wasn't here to see it, Tad. They told me once he was... They had him on the free throw line for charity. There was a certain amount per shot, and he shot 99 out of 100. Yes, well, once again, in uh, Phil's practice routine, he probably shoots about 100, 150 free throws a day, and he's as good as they come. Of course, I put the Mickey on him, and he's missed that one. He got one out of two. Oh, the pressure that he makes the miss, though. And look at that rebound as Hood goes upfield. What a great rebound by Phil Smart. That's what makes him so good. He does everything. Every aspect of the game, he excels at. It's 117, 113, 253 left in the game. The Cannons now without Jason Reese. He's fouled out of the game. Steve Wood's still in there, though. He goes into the basket. He shoots and goes straight over the top of the basket. The ball comes back. Smythe, he's almost knocked over the sideline. Way on was the call from the referees. Smythe goes in, gets in the cross ball, shoots for two, and gets two. Good play from the camera cannons. 119, 113, 226, left in the match. That's great penetration by Phil. Found Simon on the perimeter. Simon put in the good shot. And John Stelter at this one is very disappointed with the foul. He thought he made the clean steal, and the foul was going to be called on Newcastle. But the referee, Barry McLeod, sees it differently. Well, the pressure is telling any call now is a pressure call. Any call will be argued with. And sitting now is Peter Harvey. And Sean Dennis will go to the stripe with a one and one. Very important that he makes the first one and gets the second chance. It's 119 to 113, six points. He gets the first, he'll shoot for the second. Peter, it's interesting that Tom Wisdom's brought back Michael Johnson. Looks like he's going for a bit of extra scoring power the second it's 119 to 115 the pressure is on can the cannons hold on can the newcastle falcons score their second away win can they win this important double as hood goes through he's stripped with the ball and the foul is called on sean dennis sean dennis with the reach and in foul he's not ha happy with the, the call at all well, as I said, any call is going to be argued with at the moment. The pressure is intense. It's very interesting, too, that Al Green, very experienced, 36 years of age, is sitting on the bench. He's only got five fouls. At this point in the game, five fouls doesn't make any difference. That's, very, that's an interesting thing by Coach Tom Wisman, keeping him on the bench. 119 to 115. First shot from Hood. Misses. And up goes Sean Dennis with the ball. Cannons. Trying to hold them out as Stevens goes along the baseline, stripped in the ball. Cottrell called for the foul. It's unfortunate for the Cannons because good defense was played there. Stevens wasn't going to do much of anything. Very fortunate the foul was called. And that's Cottrell out of the game, is it? Yes, it is. Simon Cottrell sits. So they've lost two big men in the space of a couple of minutes. And back into the game comes Piper. So it's a game of chess from the two coaches. They've got a fast team out there, the Canberra Cannons, but the height is evaporating onto the benches. That's right now, they've got the three-guard lineup, and they're two big men, John Steltzer and Steve Hood, but probably the, the, the smallest big man in the league right now. It's for the first, and it falls. 119, 116. 
two minutes, one second left in this championship quarter, this thriller at the Palace. It's a two-point game now, two-point game. Anything can happen. Last two minutes, two-point game. What more can you ask for, Peter? Well, the call before the match was it could go into overtime, and that's very likely what might happen. Remember, Jason Reese and Simon Cottrell are out of play. They can't come back tonight. Most experienced player in the league with the ball at the moment. He goes to Kennedy. Kennedy will have to shoot. He goes across the hood. Hoods out wide. He goes to Smythe. Smythe shoots a three-pointer. And the is here. And here at the Palace, the fans are on their feet. Four from four from the three-point line for Phil Smythe. The captain is leading. And Sean Dennis answers at the other end of the three-pointer of his own. And once again, we have a two-point game. 122, 120. One minute and 19 seconds. The tension's so thick there, you can cut it with the knife. It's Lachlan Arfield with the ball. They cannot afford to miss. The defense is extremely tight, and the referees are letting them play. Hood. Arfield to three. He receives the rebound comes down. Arfield gets it. 59 seconds left in the game, and a foul is called on Newcastle. Spike was over the line. One and one with 57.8 seconds left in the match. Of course, the clock does not move on while he's at the free throw line. So in this situation, the cannons couldn't be asked for anything better. They're, they're gentle at the line, shooting a one and one to put him up possibly by four points with 57 seconds to go in the game. This is the important one, the first one. It doesn't fall. It doesn't fall. 55 seconds left, 122 to 120, Newcastle with their chance now. Ball goes across to Stevens. He comes across to Sean Dennis. Dennis goes inside the paper. Ball tied up. It's 122 to 122. 37 seconds left on the clock. Overtime is a big chance. Spike will try and run this clock down so the Cannons get the final shot of the game. It's Spike with the ball. There's about an eight second differential between the shot clock and the clock to the castle. Newcastle will have another chance. Hood has a shot up. He gets the foul. He goes to the line. 17 seconds to go. 17 seconds to go, Peter. Steve put at the line for two. Like you said, overtime is a definite chance. Steve puts these two in. Newcastle has 17 seconds to go down and put it into overtime. And we've got a timeout here at the Palace. This thriller, this championship quarter thriller, 122 all, it's all locked up. What do the coaches say? Barry Barnes looks composed. Is his team composed? Let's listen to what Barry Barnes says. We can come down before they score. We score when we score in this, all right? Stay up on Johnson. I've been looking for the three. If, they, if we're going to give it up inside, we give it up inside, all right? And then we get it down the floor. Let's go. Okay, we go with a box again, all right? With a box again. But you look to penetrate this time, all right? You know, if those are staying out on him, all right? Yeah, penetrate. penetrate. You get, right? Yeah, penetrate. You fade. You fade, because if those are chases after you. Let's have a listen to Wiseman now. Michael's going. The ball, you're going to step up here. And then have the penetration to make the, the ball right. situation. We're going to run it right after the rebound, right? We're going to go right into it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you're going to go look for Terry. If you don't have it, they shut you down. Look for Terry inside. Oh, Michael, out here. Okay? This play here, this two-man play is what we look for, okay? All right. Now, you've got, you've got one, one, or two? Two. Two. Two shots. Now, hey, hold it. Hey, hey. Even if he misses, even if he misses, even if he misses both, we run for two. We go for two. We don't all. Well, the whistle has been blown, but Tom Lehman doesn't want to let his players go. He's got to. They've got to get back on the court. The referee's come over and said, bring those players back on. 17.3 seconds left in the ball game. We have Steve Hood shooting two. Interesting, Peter. Coach Tom Wisman has, has told Paul Kuyper, the center, to get out of the key and clear to the other side so that Evan Stevens can work one-on-one -on, -one on that side, hope to penetrate, and if they do play good defense, to find Terry Dozier under the basket. So look at that at the other end. So they're going for the two. They're going to try and draw the game up. That is if Steve Hood gets these two shots. He gets the first. The crowd is one. It's 123 to 122. BP 
prepared for a sensational final 17 seconds. Can Hood put the second shot in? Hold your breath. He does. It's a two-point game. Here come Newcastle. 17 seconds left to either win it or draw it and put it into overtime. Up they come. 10 seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. With the ball, short hands. He goes to Stevens. Stevens drives in. He puts it up. The foul is called. Yeah, the foul is called yeah, before. So they're going to have a chance to put the two free throws in and put it into overtime. The foul's called on John Stelzer. We have four seconds left on the clock. And John Stelzer sits. He's out of the game. So if it goes into overtime, we have three cannons, Stelzer, Cottrell, and Reese, who cannot participate. He sits. We have four seconds left on the clock. And we have a Newcastle player. Everett Stevens at the free throw line, who so far in the game is three for four, shooting 75%. And so far in the young Newcastle season, these, these will probably be the two most important free throws of the year. Let's see what he can do with it. Ted Campbell's going there to play. Is he right if he got the uniform ready? That's right. I'll have to go out and get my out to the car and get him out of the booth. There he goes. He shoots the first. He gets it. Four seconds to go. Four seconds to go if he puts it in. Plenty of time to get the ball down the court. 124. I'm nervous up here, Peter. I'm nervous. I wonder how they're feeling. He's shooting the second. He gets it. It's all tied up. Can it be North Melbourne with four seconds left on the clock two years ago? Can they beat Newcastle? Here it goes to Kennedy. He shoots. He hasn't got the chance to. It's in overtime. We got OT. OT. Put the coffee on at home. Oh, oh. Well, we're into overtime. And there's Al Green in it, rubbing oh, Evan Stevens' head. And the Newcastle, of course, are very happy. They doesn't look like they're in the fourth quarter, Peter. Now just tell us about this overtime situation, Tad. Okay, what happens in overtime is we have five minutes more. We'll jump it up just like at the start of each quarter. And at the end of five minutes, if it's, if it's tied still, we'll go another five minutes. So we keep going until someone is ahead at the end of the five minute periods. Okay, wherever you're watching, keep the jug boiling. I hope your nerves are hanging out. We might go right through the Mother's Day with this one. 124 all, but the bad news for Canberra is that Reese, Stilzer and Cottrell are out of the ball game. What, a, what an experience for young Matt Sorner. Probably, I'm not sure how old is he. We've got him down at 20. 20 years old, and of course, this is going to be the most important basketball experience of his life. It's going to be very interesting to see how he puts up with it. They're looking very small inside right now with the Cannons. And over at the Newcastle, and we also have Al Green with five fouls and Paul Kuyper on five. So everybody's in foul trouble now. But it's really five minutes to go. What about, can happen? what about the situation, Tad? Now, we're coming into overtime. We've been playing for around two hours. They are backing up the Newcastle Falcons after a tough game last night. Is that going to have some effect? Well, I really don't think so, Peter, because right now the adrenaline's blowing so high. They've, they've fought their way back into overtime. They've done all the hard work. I think right now the last thing they're, they're feeling is tired. Okay. The Cannons are back on the court for the overtime situation. And we have Kennedy, Hood, Matt Zorner, Lachlan Armfield. 20 years of age, Zorner and Armfield. And oh, what the Cannons wouldn't like for Herb McEachin right now on the court. The experience of old Herb McEachin. If that leg is feeling healthy right now, things will be looking good. But right now, inside, they're looking very small. They've got about a 6'1", 6'1", 6'1", 6'4". And inexperienced Matt Zorner. So right now the cannons look behind the eight ball. Can they hang on? And Zorner comes up with the first touch tip. And Smythe with the ball. 124 all. Five minutes left. Offensive foul called on Matt Zorner. On the screen setup. If we have a replay, that's a very interesting call because it looked like to me that the screen was a good one. Levin Stevens picks himself off the court. Here it is. Let's see if Matt Zorner is stationary. There he is. Well, I don't know. Very tough call. Very tough one, especially at home to get a call like that. Well, it's a tough call seeing how much they let go in that last quarter. That's right. Physical play all the time. And looked like a good screen to me. Anyway, that's the call with 124 all. Newcastle now with a chance to take the lead. As Kuiper puts the ball up. And the ball goes down, and Smythe hands the foul out, so that means he'll go to the line 
for an extra shot. And Peter, that's indicative of, of the size of the Cannons right now. Kuiper takes the shot, and who gets the rebound but the big man for Newcastle, Terry Dozier. They're just too small inside. They really have to make an extra effort to block off those boards. He gets the bonus point. It's 127 to 124. Now it's very important now for the Cannons to get a very good shot. They cannot force any bad shots now because their offensive rebounding, of course, is limited to the fact that Reese Cotswold and, and Stelz are all on the bench. Mike with the ball. He's got arm fell free. Goes out to Kennedy, who's wide. Last 10 seconds. The last thing they want to do is have to force a shot. They want to get a good shot now, so they're going to move it around. Arm fell. Driving. Penetration to Matt Warner. Gets the foul. Good play by both of the rookies. Locked and Armfield penetrates, makes the good pass to Zorner, who has the presence of mind to give the head and shoulder fake, get the man off his feet, draw the foul, and go to the line for two. Here it is on the replay. Great pass there. Fakes up. There's Everett Stevens jumping on the back of Matt Zorner. Just shaking his head. Matt Zorner comes it right on the top of the temple. He gets the first. Has to have ice water in his veins. Of a veteran. Peter, that's the key for Canberra. They've got a small lineup, but they've got to try and beat Newcastle with their quickness. He gets both of them. So Zorna replies. And they are pressuring up with their with their small line of trying to force Newcastle into a mistake. One point the difference. Newcastle. Stevens is put on the line. And it's come down for Kennedy for the rebound. No need for that shot. 26 to 127. Hood. Oh, and there's that man Dozier once again. Look at him shaking his hand. A great block by the defensive player of the year last year, Terry Dozier. And that's why. What a pickup. I, I just can't believe it. You're all super catch let Terry Dozier go. Well, Newcastle was certainly glad he did. He takes pride in his defense. There he is on Steve Hood. Smiles that man to general. For a five from outside the three-point line. What a game by Phil Smythe. Is it going to be good enough to get his side home? 129 to 127. Stevens goes, goes in. The ball goes down by Dozier. And once again, the inside play from Newcastle. They're just too small to defend inside, so we're going to need some more of those three-pointers from Phil. 129 all. It's all locked up at the Palace. We're in overtime here if you've just joined us. Phil wants to slow it up here and neutralize it by using, by using the, the clock. They don't want to get an up and down running match because that can hurt them. Kennedy. There's the 10 second hooter. Only 30 seconds to shoot. As Armfield goes in, he puts out a loose pass on and gets it. No, he can't get to the ball. And once again, a pass that probably, Lockham had the choice again, he probably wouldn't have tried to penetrate there. He thought he could beat Michael Johnson, but great defense, good team defense, and created the bad pass by the Cannons. 129 to 129, two minutes, 56 seconds. And the Cannons in a 2-3 zone, trying to neutralize the size differential. This is the man they've got to watch, Johnson. There's that man, Smythe. What a great play. They got Lockett on the field at the other end. He can't miss. At two points. He doesn't. Oh, Phil Smythe. He's playing superbly tonight, Phil Smythe. Here it is, and Lachlan Armfield has been doing that since he was five. What, what a great defensive play by Phil Smythe. I'd have a go at the Canberra zone. When was the last time you saw Phil Smythe play in the back spot in the forward position? That's right. Well, back in the old days uh, when Jerry Lee played, he, he often would play at the bottom on a 1-3-1. This is a 2-3. With a 2-3, you usually have a big player sitting in position he is. But once again, if anybody can do it, Bill Smythe can. And by 2-3, two, two players at the front, three at the back. They've got some tall timber out there, Newcastle. There's 239 left on the clock. It's 131 to 129. The home team, the Canberra Cannons, up at the moment. They've got three players fouled out of the match. This will be a huge effort for them to hang on as Stevens goes in. And there's Phil Smythe at the end of Robert Steele. It goes to Armfield. He's going to go all the way. Is he? as to why Phil Smythe down there at the bottom. Well, right. I hope you're feeling the atmosphere at home, but I will tell you, you've got to get out to the game to feel the atmosphere at these NBL matches. It's 133 to 129. We've got a timeout at the Palace. 
See if we can save. We've got to try and get Stevens out of the middle. What's happening, he's coming out to stop the can try and contain the man. And if that's when they're finding those or a piper underneath. Yeah, you've got back to help tremendously. But that's when you stay at home, but you two at the top, try and just take away the penetration, all right? Good job on Johnson. Stay with him. Stay always within touch of Johnson. All right? Michael on the wing. Terry comes up. Let the base right man. We run it off. But right now, at the end of 2-1-2, we go freelance. Okay? Penetrate the pass. shooter Michael Johnson yeah, that's very interesting Peter because they're four points down they still need two baskets so it's not really not necessary for them to make a three-point basket it's a much more difficult shot so it's interesting that that's the, the plan of coach Tom Wisman Ben you're sitting directly behind the cannons bench down there they still seem composed oh I stand corrected we do have Lock and Arthur come to line for one if he does make this and we'll put him up by five and they will need a three-point shot but that's right, Pretty. You can't say much about that man, Phil Smythe. They've lost Jason Reese, they've lost John Stelzer, they've lost Simon Cottrell, and he's just lifting his team. He's playing like he's six foot six out there. Lachlan Armfield for the bonus points, he gets it. It's a five point break. Is it a winning break for the Cannons? Newcastle supporters say no, Cannon supporters say yes. Stay with us, you'll know at home. It's 2.13 left on the clock. A thriller at the Palace. I don't think too many people would have picked the Cannons to win an overtime with the three big ones sitting on the bench. But what a performance they've shown. They bet the rebound, Kennedy puts his hand in. And that's good for Newcastle because the clock stops and they get to score without the clock running down. And once again, another offensive rebound. Shooting one and one. Yes, he'll be going to the line for one and one now. Once again, the important free throw being the first one so that he can get the second. The noise goes up at the Palace. He's missed it. And Kennedy comes down. Oh, heavy defense across there. Great hustle by Terry Dozer to retrieve him. There's that three-pointer they're talking about, and it goes from downtown Michael Johnson. So we have a great game here. Once again, it's been super, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any less time. Well, he was three, four feet outside the three-point line. That's the blue line you can see on the court. Kennedy with it. The cannon's up, 134 to 132. 132 on the clock. So it's all 132s and 134s. Once again, we're down to the 10-second buzzer. And there's Phil Smythe looking at fighting lock and off on the other side. Penetrate into Matt Zorner. Three seconds in the lane. Matt Zorner, thinking that Lachlan was going to shoot, stayed in the lane a little bit too long. Now we have Newcastle coming back the other way to tie the game up. Boy, what a game we've had here. 117, 134 to 132. He shoots the three. It comes off. Zorner picks up the rebound. It's the, it's the Cannons with the ball. And this is probably the most important trip down the court of the night. Thumb up, says Barry Barnes. Thumbs up, says Phil Smythe. Stevens runs the ball. The, Stevens runs for the deep. For the big steal there, but didn't make it, Peter. With the ball, There's 50 the ball. seconds left. Oh, my goodness. Mike is hot at the palace. Six for six from the three-point line. 27 points, nine for 12 from the field. He's for three. It misses. Kennedy getting the rebound. Is it all over? We have 37.9 seconds, and we have a foul. And I think it is called. We're just looking. It looks to me as though it has been called on Sean Dennis. And that's correct. Well, they have a saying. I'm sure everyone's heard it in the opera. It's not over till the fat lady sings. I think she's singing right now, Peter. 137 to 132. I'm not prepared to write Newcastle off just yet. Kennedy. And we have a timeout. Barry Barnes wants to make sure of it. Let's go with that Phil Smythe. Incredible. We said it together. <laughs> Nine for 12 from the field, including six for six from beyond the three-point line. Four steals. 
Once again, he's lifted the cannons. Well, I've seen Phil Smythe playing here for the past three seasons, and this would be the best game I've ever seen him play. I know he's played some brilliant matches, but under pressure, under pressure. Well, I'd have to say, I've been here a little bit longer than that, Peter, and I've seen him play, I wouldn't go as far as say it's his best game ever, but certainly, I mean, he does it so many times, game in and game out. He's going to be 34 on Tuesday, I think. And uh, he just keeps doing, he just, he, he astounds me. I'm sure uh, by field standards, his last two seasons haven't been his best. And he's looking already that he's going to turn it around and uh, he's going to take the cannons places this year. We have 37 seconds, 37.9 seconds on the clock at the Palace. And as I said to you a moment, moment ago, you've got to get out to the Palace to watch the game. Feel this atmosphere. I hope you're feeling it at home and your living rooms, wherever you're watching, out west on the south coast or throughout the Canberra region. Well, I was talking about the experience of the cannons and, and how maybe the inexperience of Matt Zorner might pay out. But I think maybe that last last trip down where the Newcastle came down with all they needed was a basket to score and Sean Dennis put up the three-pointer from beyond the three-point line with probably 20 seconds to go on the on the shooting clock. And, and it's easy to look in hindsight, but I think maybe that might be the turn in the game with a poor shot selection there by Sean. 37.9 seconds as Jamie Kennedy goes to the line. And once again, Al Green. 36 years old, NBL ring, very experienced, is sitting on the bench. And Kennedy shooting. The first one falls. And here's a big st stat statistic for you. If Kennedy nails this one, it will be his 3,000th NBL points. And it is. What a time to bang it. There's still Smythe going for another steal. He refuses to let Everett Stevens get the ball. Up they come. He goes to Johnson, shoots the three. He gets it. Puts it down. It's 139 to 135. Four points the difference. And the pressure's on. And they need two possessions. They need to get a three-pointer or two two-pointers. So they're going to need to make a basket and make another steal. Funnier things have happened. Four points the difference. It goes to Matt Zorner, the young rookie. And the foul is called on Grant Kruger. Peter, Newcastle's going to try and foul at every opportunity now. The reason why is to try and stop the clock, hoping that Canberra will go down the other end and miss the foul shots so they get another crack at scoring. Okay, of course, missing the foul shots means he gets one and one. He shoots one. If he misses the first, the ball is in play. Get up. He misses it. It's in play. 19 seconds left, 139 to 135, I need two scores, it goes to Johnson, the defence is hard, Stevens shoots over the top, it misses, that could be the last shot for the Falcons, put with the ball, he goes to Zorner on the far side, two, one second left in the game, and the foul is called. And we have to say the game is over now, and once again we talk about the inexperience of the of the camera big man and there's Matt Zorner stepping up grabbing the big rebound and he's done a great job on overtime well they look happy the Canberra cannons any wonder this has been a courageous victory Sean Dennis committed the foul he goes to sit he's out of the game but there's only 1.7 seconds left in the game this has been a super victory for the Canberra Cannons over a side that I believe will be in the playoffs for sure this year. Newcastle are a great team. They are a very good team, and we, won't, we haven't heard the last of them. What a great victory by the Cannons. Three big men on the bench. They've lifted themselves through the leadership of Phil Smythe. There's the final winner. It's all over at the Palace. The scoreline, 139 to 135. A courageous victory by the Canberra Cannons, who went into extra time with their three big men, fouled out of the game. We're going to go down there and try and get Phil Smythe. The crowd is running onto the court, and any wonder they're slapping, they're smiling, but still the sportsmanship is there. Ben Morrissey is down there with Phil Smythe. We'll try and cross down to them right now. With me, Phil Smythe. Congratulations, Phil. What an emotional game and a great comeback, losing all your tall timber. Yeah, I guess it uh, goes to show we've got uh, good strength on the bench now. The young kids came in and did a good job for us. You can't ask for any more than that. You're paying down that support position on the arm defence. How's it feel going against all those 6'6 guys? You feel a bit taller now? Yeah, I guess.
guess uh, you're kind of used to it uh, internationally. Everyone's 6'6", six, six, uh, but everyone hung together. That's what we need. Shot great from the three-point line tonight. Great shooting. The ring must just look as big as the Sydney heads. <laughs> yeah, we've been working hard. Uh, all the guys shot well. It was just a great team game for us. Thanks a lot, Phil. Congratulations. Great, great game from Phil Smythe. Thank you. You can say that again, Ben, and we'll be back to wrap up this thriller. 139 to 135 victory to the Canberra Cannons.